Catch is made, and he fumbles. Valley causes a fumble, it's picked up. Recovered by Mason Morris. Mason picks up where he left off last year, one of the leading rushers in Central Iowa. It's time now for West Des Moines Valley High School Football on the Central Iowa Sports Network. CISN.TV is Iowa's premier source for live stream high school football. High school football on CISN.TV is brought to you by Atlantic Bottlers, Schottenkirk Chevrolet, Shields, the Better Business Bureau, GNL Clothing. Now let's go to our CISN.TV team for Valley Tiger High School Football. Chevy Truck Month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet in Waukee means 0% for 72 months on all 17 Silverados in Colorado. For a limited time, 20% off 17 Cruise, Trax, and Malibu. New 18 Equinox. Power Truck 24 per month. 0% for 72 months on a huge selection of 17 Silverado in Colorado. It's Truck Month in Waukee. Schottenkirk Chevrolet on the west end of Hickman, Waukee. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live, of perseverance and progress. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream, we make history. This Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Why do I look? A pleasant good evening to you from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. It's high school football playoff style on this Friday night. I'd say it's a warm good evening, but I might not be telling you the truth. But again, it's all about perspective. 34 degrees at kickoff is what our forecast is. In fact, we're going to actually warm up to 30. Five degrees by the time the night is through. The winds out of the northwest at 19 miles an hour. The fans are brave. Those are the hearty souls here tonight. And another one is with me as well. I am Paul Yeager. The hearty one is Keith Bornis. How many layers you got on there, Keith? I got a couple layers. It's uh, 34 outside with uh, 75 mile an hour winds, but in the press box, it is only 33 degrees with no wind. Some guy's got the window open. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, <laughs> you know, the wind is out of that north. That's uh, where the, the field kind of goes, north and south here. So they could host the Super Bowl if they ever needed to at Valley Stadium because of the north-south field. Uh, but, Keith, this is playoff football. Uh, but on Friday nights this fall, I think you and I jinxed it more me than you when I said in week six, gosh, you know what, we've had a really good run this year of weather perfect nights mm -hmm. and then we had the skies open up in week eight or and six you know just rain and rain and delays and then all of a sudden the thermostat it's like uh, somebody kicked the uh the heater out of the uh the plug in the house and all of a sudden we got nothing it really was a beautiful fall yeah and was being the key term there it uh, got cold very quick the, the nice thing about it, if you can have a silver lining with this, at least it was cool all week so that the guys can yeah. get acclimated. Well, and that's uh, one thing I talked about with head coach Gary Swenson about the weather. And I said, well, at least you got a little bit of time to prep as opposed to you show up Friday night. It's the first time you've had, uh, you know, anything to do with the elements. So how do you get ready for element football, I asked. And he said, well, 
we worked on the kicking game. We punted, <laughs> we kicked off, just so, A, the kickers can get a sense for uh, what the elements are like when they put it into the air, and then there were the return guys, because mm -hmm. that too, Keith, that's all of a sudden special teams on a, in November – when yes. the weather turns like this, becomes a really big deal. It does. And how you practice is extremely important, as Coach Swenson was alluding to. You have to figure out, because the gloves, you can't just show up with a pair of gloves all of a sudden. They do have to be uh, NCAA approved or National Federation High School approved gloves. They're not the thickest things you've ever worn. Um, and then, you know, how do you judge the wind on a punt? How do you deal with the wind in a punt? The beautiful thing about this week was the wind was out of the same direction yeah. all week. Yeah, and that's one thing. You know, you, you can't really practice for the rain. Uh, you did have that one Monday night when practices were started and then they ended because they had to, to, to head inside. But uh, speaking of heading somewhere, we are going to head to the break machine for just a moment, and uh, we'll get you ready for Valley and – Oh, yeah, we should tell you who uh, is playing tonight. It's the Valley Tigers and Council Bluffs Lewis Central. High school playoff football here. Audio only coming your way in just a moment on CISN.TV. I opened the hearing clinic to offer patients and their families a positive health care experience. If you have trouble hearing clearly at church, at the movies, watching TV, or with your friends and family in a group conversation, what are you waiting for? In less than half an hour, we can give you peace of mind and answer any questions that you may have. Call us today to schedule your appointment. The Hearing Clinic, 515-440-3323. We listen, you hear. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. Miss your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place. GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. October and we all know what that means. Time for our annual mammograms. Iowa Radiology believes that mammograms are the best way to catch breast cancers early and save lives. With 3D and low-dose technology, they are now more accurate and safe. It's only once a year and if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your daughters, your friend, your sons, or your family. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. Welcome back to Valley Stadium. Paul Yeager and Keith Bornis for this uh, first round game. It's Valley and Lewis Central, two eight and one teams. Uh, the winner of this one will face uh, Ankeny Centennial and Waukee's winner. That game tonight on uh, at Northview Middle School on the north side of Ankeny. The bottom part of the bracket is Johnston and Southeast Polk. That game at Johnston at the new stadium there on uh, the northwest side of town. And Urbandale and Dowling Catholic. That game at Urbandale tonight. And then on the eastern side, it's uh, Iowa City West against Cedar Rapids, Washington. Cedar Falls against Prairie, Bettendorf, and PV. North Scott and Davenport Central. Uh, this ball game, Keith, features uh, two teams, eight and one, two very good football teams. This is one you could play this at any level of the uh, the postseason and, and get a good game. This would make a, a darn good semifinal. It would make a great semifinal game. I think you could say that. Um, about well, any of them. Any of them. Yeah. This is the most balanced I have seen the playoffs on the uh, western side of the state. It's pretty impressive. Anybody legitimately has a chance to come out of this and make it into the Dome. It is different because of uh, the shortened season. We will pause just for a moment to honor America.
Keith, it's so cold, I see Santa Claus down there. Uh, you know, these are two. How about that? How about that in the student section? Yeah. The Hardy students are here tonight. Uh, these two teams, pretty even in a lot of the, st the statistical categories, if you just want to look at some things on paper. Uh, Lewis Central averaging 39.6 points a game, Valley 37. Total offense per game can't get too much closer than this. Uh, the Titans at 340.5, the Tigers at 339. Uh, so you have both of these, and they both uh, very similar in their rush to pass ratios and it, yards per catch and things like that. And, you know, anything, Keith, in the postseason is possible. Anybody can win. You know, throw whatever cliche you want to. Uh, but this is one of those nights where uh, the road team, if, if, if Max Duggan is not hurt earlier in the season, this game tonight uh, – Lewis Central is in, the, is in Council Bluffs playing a home game. I agree. They are really good with him at the uh, quarterback spot uh, because anymore it's a three-season season, if you will, with the preseason games, then the district games, and then the postseason for those fortunate enough to, uh, to make that. Max has uh, 13 Power 5 offers. This kid's for real. I remember seeing him as a freshman, and you only – Got a lot of ink in the uh, in the off season talking about these offers. Uh, he's uh, visited at Iowa State and Nebraska, and he'll visit Iowa later and Kansas State and Minnesota. He'll be in Ames tomorrow for Iowa State and TCU. Uh, this is a kid a lot of people know about. And you ask his uh, coach, who just ha knows him extremely well, has known him for a long time. Uh, it's Jim Duggan, his father, and uh, Jim's been doing it a long time, 34 years. He's seen. He's had Division One quarterbacks. He's had mm -hmm. FCS quarterbacks. A guy named Jake Waters. Ring Not a bell for anybody? Not too bad. Uh, played for Lewis Central and <laughs> Iowa Western and then ended up at uh, Kansas State. So Lewis Central wins and defers, and Valley will then receive on the uh, south end and go north here in just a couple of minutes. So we get you ready for it. So th the thing about Duggan, and I asked Coach Swenson, what, what is it about this kid? What do you see? And he says, he can complete the deep ball. That's what separates a high school quarterback. You can, anybody can complete the out or the curl, but he can complete the deep ball. Which is amazing if you're a one-dimensional quarterback. Oh. The, <laughs> the, he's a dual threat. In fact, uh, naturally, when everybody stands around the water cooler and starts to discuss the uh, ins and outs of high school athletics and you start to talk about uh, the Duggan kid, all of a sudden, people are saying, throwing out numbers like he's rated number four in the country as a dual threat quarterback. He is their second leading uh, rusher behind DeAnthony Bridgeford. Max has 57 carries for 444 yards. That's just under eight yards per carry. Seven touchdowns on the ground. And then uh, passing, he's not too bad either. 60 three of 38 for 666 yards in how many games in just uh six games so you know you miss time with a thumb and mm -hmm. valley uh is set to def uh, to to defend here keith real quickly keys to this contest the keys to the contest for valley they have to contain they cannot stop duggan but if they can contain them they have a, a legitimate shot to win council bluffs they got to win it up front Win it up front, Paul. And anything can happen. Kicking off for Lewis Central is Drake Nettles in his uh, navy blue pants, white shirt, blue helmet, kicks it into the air. We're underway. That's going to bounce uh, over the head of Valley's uh, Trey Fugate. And it'll be first and ten on a touchback situation here for the Tigers. If you're Lewis Central, what's your key tonight, Keith? It's all about what your offensive and defensive linemen can do. As it's the same guys, they're going to be playing all night. Lewis Central's got six two-way starters of their 17 returning letter winners, or returning starters, actually. Uh, so if the, it's for Lewis Central, it is controlling the line of scrimmage. Lombardi in the shotgun to start. Tigers in their all-black uniforms, white pants, orange stripe, and with a black trim. In motion goes Brown, but they go with Mason right up the middle, and he gets nine yards before he's tackled uh, by Lewis Central's Jack Salumtic. If you uh, notice there, Paul, I know that uh, people listening are not 
necessarily noticing, but Jake Remsburg got off the ball downfield quite a bit. If Valley is progressing with their offensive line like they have throughout the year, uh, the line of scrimmage will be a tough spot. Mason goes in, then out, and has the first down outside near the Lewis Central uh, sideline, and the tackle is made by Zach Shipman, the senior defensive back, 6'4", 175. Enough for a first down. Move the chains. Tigers get the ball up to the 34-yard line. You know, when going back to that kickoff, Lewis Central was had their kickoff team on, Valley's kick return team. Valley's kick return team really wasn't even looking to return the ball as that 60 mile an hour wind was probably going to put it in the end zone, which it did. Oh, it's it, already reduced from 70 to 60? That's right. And this is going to certainly have an impact on what Valley does offensively going into it. Mason up the middle takes a Titan with him up to the 45 yard line. Last one off the turf for the Titans is uh, Josh Simmons. First down for for Valley, move it up to the 45 yard line, gain of 11. Great run by uh, Mason there. He had a great surge with the offensive line, but when he got through that line, he lo looks like he came to play. Valley three for three on running the football, sends uh, one in motion. There's a whistle before the play, and uh, it's going to be on Valley. Offense, Illegal procedure, Offense, and they're going to whistle uh, Jalen Long. So that'll move the Tigers back to the 40. It'll be first and 15. And Dane Norville, number uh, 21 for uh, the Titans, the, he was right up there getting into some uh, bump and run coverage. He was pretty excited about the fact he got uh, long to move. Same play again, and it's going to be same penalty. And I th is it two guys in motion? Is that what it is? Uh, just a false start. So now this one goes back to the, and Coach Swenson's kind of looking for some clarification. A first and 10 turns into a first and 20 very quickly. All the way back to the 35. And now, Bo is under center. Hand off Mason on the draw and that one goes nowhere. Good stop right there in the middle, Hayden Hatcher. And it's a loss of a yard on the play. Mason has gotten all the carries to this point. Four running plays, we're at the 10 minute mark. Right now, Valley is one dimensional and that is something that uh, Lewis Central wants to keep happening as they've gotten a pretty good sur surge defensively. Trips come to the near side for Valley. They're gonna pass it, here comes the blitz. They get it on the screen to Mason. He makes one guy miss, but he won't make two. Tackled back uh, near the line of scrimmage. Logan Jones makes the stop. Jones, a loss of a yard. It'll be third and 22 for the Tigers. That defensive line by Lewis Central moves very well. They're big, stout guys, and uh, they were able to move laterally and close that running lane down very quickly. Third and 22, 921 to play in this contest. Lewis Central on defense is all of a sudden stiffened like the wind. Lombardi rolls out near side, has a little bit of time, but that window closes, throws down the field, and it's incomplete, and it'll be a punting situation. Good defense by the Titans, and the Tigers are going to have to punt. Great coverage by that uh, defensive backfield, and a good surge again by the defensive line. Lombardi really had to scramble out of that pocket. A, a designed rollout, but sometimes when you are uh, having to move faster than you thought you originally would, kind of disrupts your uh, throwing just a little bit. All the plays designed to Mason except for that last one. And uh, the Tigers were no longer one dimensional on that, but they had to, and I think everybody in the building knew they were gonna pass. The punt is taken uh, at the 34 and then spun out of coverage. Good coverage by uh, Valley. And then uh, I'll tell you what, Simmons, <laughs> he's got to pick up the decal off as he got uh, <laughs> rocked right there. Six plays, a 13 yard drive for the Tigers, stalls out on a punt. And uh, we've played, uh, we're just under now the nine minute mark at 8.58, no score here at Valley Stadium. Paul Yeager and Keith Bornis. And that punt, that punt, you said uh, the first 
five of six plays went to Mason. Well, that punter was Mason. He does the rugby style when called upon, and tonight is one of those nights. We get a first look at Duggan now in the offense. He sends one in motion, does the play action. They go to the left side. It's on the jet sweep. Still on his feet. Nice move there is Dane Norville. Great job by Norville. He did a, he's got some quicks to him. And what really helps set up that play is the fact that Duggan went ahead and carried his fake out to the opposite side. He is going to pull some linebackers with him. Oh, we love that play, carrying out the fake. That is where it's at. So now on the uh, left hash with 831, Duggan will stay in the shotgun formation. He has two receivers to the left and right. Passing, gets the seams right, throws, caught near the first down and is a first down, caught. Far sideline, Zach Shipman, one of the Zachs, with a catch, gain of seven. The Zach attack? I just came up that long. I wonder home. where that's from. Oh. Yeah. Uh, nice job. Knowing where the sticks are, he went right to the first down marker, caught it, done. Gain of six. Math is, for me is, is hard. Tigers uh, on defense here. They've given up. 13 yards in their first two plays. Quarterback draw, Duggan can run, and he has stopped, but still falls forward for two. Making the tackle is uh, Jacob McCudden for the Tigers. Ball gets past the 45, so it's at the 46, gain of three. If there's one thing that you could bank on Valley working on this week, it was uh, one of their scout quarterbacks tucking the ball and trying to get what he can. And that's what Duggan just did. He just went on did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Second down, seven yards to go, seven and a half to play. Duggan looks to the left, throws to the right, nearly tipped, and free ball it is intercepted. intercepted. Coming up with the INT is McCudden. And that ball went into the night air. And that's a, a huge turnover because Lewis Central was doing anything it wanted to. That's right. They're getting that surge up front. Those guys, I, I don't know if you notice this, Paul, but their offensive line, they didn't come off the field. They're right there for the defensive line work now. And so, yeah, they're push, making a great push. Uh, Valley, great job getting into that passing lane, disrupting it, and coming down with the interception. Tigers have the football now at their uh, 49 of Lewis Central. Up the middle, Mason, and then darts it to the outside. He gets out to the hash, tries to shake, bake, and expel his way towards that far sideline, stays inbounds, gets past the 45 to the 43, gain of six on the play. Colton Chu made a shoestring tackle over there, and it was very impressive. I never, see, I never saw him come in, uh, but he got there quick. Shoes play, he's a senior, played a lot of football for Lewis Central. Coach Duggan really said a lot of nice things about him this week when we had a chance to converse. No score, 637. Valley has the ball after a turnover. Tariq goes in motion, and then it's that same play. So Valley's doing something here that's a little different on that motion. So it'll be against Valley. This will push it back. To the 48. Hey, Paul, we'll take just a moment to remind everybody that we're not actually able to show the video tonight. Uh, nobody has the rights to show this as it is a playoff game. So it's audio and scoreboard only. Just the golden tones of Keith Bornis. And Keep Paul Yeager. <laughs> I don't know about that. Lombardi on second and long. Throws near side. Ah, oh, nearly. Or at least it was tipped. I won't say it was intercepted. Dane Norville was there. And the intended receiver was Jalen Long. Incomplete. It'll be third and nine. Talk about two very good athletes that are matched up against each other tonight. Jalen Long and uh, Norville. That is going to be interesting to watch all night. Norville's made a couple of nice plays so far. 6 8 Clock stopped at the uh, incomplete. Mason's next to Lombardi. Mason will slip out of the backfield. Lombardi looks, throws to Mason. Caught and well short of the first down. Caught and dropped. That's Hayden Hatcher, the senior, 6'3", 205-pound linebacker. He 
read that one like a book. Gain of three. Javon Mason still in for punt formation. This would be at uh, one of those positions on the field where it could be his discretion on whether he thinks he can make five yards or not. We have seen him this year read the defense and take off. We'll see what Mason does. He takes it, runs to the near side, and yep, he is gonna run it and then go to the right side, and he does have some turf. He's at the 40, 35, 30, 25 far sideline. The return man knocks him down at the 19 yard line. That's the advantage of the rugby style kick. Initially, Mason came left and then flooded back to the right. And But Lewis Central had it set up so perfectly to stop the run from coming to that side. Uh, Mason being a left footed kicker, as he was coming to the left side, they had that side stacked. He was not going to go outside, and he did a little uh, change of direction for a big game. Gain of 25 up to the 20-yard line is where they're going to say Mason was out of bounds at the Lewis Central 20. Tigers uh, get new life here with 5.15 to play first quarter. Valley offense been on the field a lot. Spe big plays have made a difference for them. They go Mason, a uh, different running, but that's Trey Fugate. And Fugate uh, gets inside the 15 before he is tackled by Josh Simmons. So far tonight, Paul, I have seen two running backs from Valley really become explosive. Uh, at different times throughout the year, we kind of question, are they going to be a finesse runner? Are they going to try and run wide on things? Both times, both the running backs have gone straight up the middle. They've gained some pretty good yards play action they go Fugate and he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage great defensive play Hayden Hatcher that one was not a mirror play of the previous one it was not a repeat Hatcher wow he got through there very quickly from that Mike linebacker position no gain on the play Fugate just lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage and now Mason is back in play clock under 20 Game clock, 4-15. No score, Valley and Lewis Central in this Class 4A first round playoff matchup. Lombardi looks, throws downfield, and it's in and out of the hands. Would have been a touchdown. And the intended receiver, Luke Matney, in his orange sleeves, had six right there, had his jersey number, and instead the Tigers are going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. A tough spot to be in as a wide receiver. You want to you want to do everything you can to protect yourself. You know you're going to catch the ball in traffic. Your hands are cold. you got to get adjusted to that. And so sometimes you try and let the ball come into the body, and that's when bad things happen. You have to catch the ball with your hands first and then bring it in. Eighth play of the drive will be a field goal attempt for the Tigers. And I believe that's Cole Peterson. He'll put it down from the 21, and it's low, and it's kicked right at the Lewis Central player and recovered by Dane Norville. That ball never even got above knee height. At first, I thought it was blocked. I just don't think he got any leg under it. Yeah. Missed 31-yard field goal. The score stays at 0, 355 to go. You know, we were talking beforehand about what is this score going to be like tonight? This could be a game where it is 0-0 through most of the game, or it could be a game where both teams catch fire and just put up points like no other, or it could become lopsided depending on whose defense shows up. So uh, it's 0-0 now with 3.55 to go, but it could get crazy here yet. Lewis Central takes a timeout, and so will we. This is CISN.TV. Chevy Truck Month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet in Waukee means 0% for 72 months on all 17 Silverados and Colorados. For a limited time, 20% off 17 Impala, Cruise, Trax, and Malibu LTs, Sonic and Spark LSs, new Chevy Spark, Power Prunch, 11980, new 18 Equinox, Power Prunch, 224 per month. It's Truck Month in Waukee, Schottenkirk Chevrolet, on the west end of Hickman, Waukee. Chevy truck. Many times at the Lodge of Ashworth, new members come to us from their big, beautiful homes. They find our spacious two and three bedroom suites to be an ideal fit. 
We have a limited number of these larger and penthouse style suites, perfect for the retiring executive's style living. We have suites ready for immediate move in or we can help you customize. The Lodge of Ashworth is all inclusive. No surprise, additional fees or upcharges. Call us today for a private tour and ask us about our flexible pricing plan. Max Duggan takes it along the left side and he gets about a yard, yard and a half on the carry. It's up to the 18, it'll be second down and eight. They're gonna give him two on that play. So the ball now is at the 18, it was at the 16. That's where the missed field goal went. They're gonna go D'Angelo and he is gonna be stuffed right at uh, the point of launch. Really nowhere to go for D'Angelo Bridgeford. Right now, Valley's defense is playing very well up front. Uh, they're starting to, uh, at least in those last couple of plays, control it, and they've kind of stuffed a very potent offense by uh, Lewis Central. They're going to give him a gain of one, and now... Trips come to the right. There is a receiver to the left for Duggan. He fakes the pass, runs right by one defender, still on his feet, and he's swallowed under at about the 25. He's about two yards short of the first down. Tackle for the Tigers made by uh, Julius Imhoff Adon, Amafadon. Easy for you to say. Easy for you to say. Julius Amafadon, great young man, did a great job there. You can, uh, the uh, punt return men for Valley are just a little bit deeper than normal. 78 mile an hour wind. <laughs> it's gone back up. Penalty on the play, Ryan knew. It's a short kick, bounces at midfield, and then takes a uh, Lewis Central bounce of about, roll of about six yards. It'll be downed inside the 40, but hold the phones. Penalty back at the line of scrimmage. Well, they're moving the chain, so I'm wondering, there's no way they'd have picked it up. Well, I don't see the... I don't see the laundry down there anymore. I don't either, unless it's right there on that sideline. Uh, Coach Swenson is uh, declining the penalty anyway. Oh, okay. So it's now uh, 150 to play. First quarter, no score between Valley and Lewis Central. So Valley will have the football. Another great field position start for them. Ball is at the 37. He started on the Lewis Central side of the field the last drive and had a missed field goal. Lombardi comes out again for his uh, third offensive series. They give it to Mason right side. He gets through the middle. And he gets what they give him, the defense of Lewis Central. And making the stop is uh, Colby Roth. That was a pretty impressive run there by Mason. There was nowhere to go. And he was still able to kind of uh, squeeze his way through for four yards, almost five. Ball to the Valley 43. Approaching a minute here, Lombardi goes under center. Hand off Mason off right tackle. He's trying to get to the outside and he just has to finally cut his losses and take a one yard gain. But uh, making that play possible is uh, Jack Salentic. He really kind of just, you know how you always try to string those plays out as long as possible down yeah. the line of scrimmage and that's what Lewis Central did to a T right there. A great job. You can really see the athleticism by both squads here, but uh, you know they they talk about Lewis Central not playing anybody all year. Uh, they're a very very good football team, very athletic. Lombardi on third down, pocket collapses, loses the football. Valley might have it back, but it is a scrum back at the 38 yard line. There are two black jerseys, a white jersey, Lewis Central starting to cheer, and the Titans have it. Back at the 38-yard line, Lombardi lost it on the, on the tackle, 
And Lewis Central gets a gift, and it's now one-to-one -one when you look at turnovers. The passing pocket collapsed very quickly, and you got to give a lot of credit to Lewis Central's defense as they are getting such a pass rush going. It's tough to get anywhere. So Lewis Central will start at the 38-yard line of Valley, their best starting position, and before they go any further, it is a uh, timeout. We'll That's their second timeout. We'll take a quick 30-second break, 30 seconds, and back on CISN.TV. The other guys, they think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the tea. It's a Godfather specialty pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. The other. 19 seconds remain on the first quarter clock. Paul Yeager and Keith Bornis from Valley Stadium tonight. Ball is at the Valley 38-yard line following a fumble and a recovery by Lewis Central. Duggan just goes absolutely hard right and gets up to the 30-yard line. Gain of eight on the play, and that was a run all the way. Yes, you know, on those dual-threat quarterbacks, sometimes you can sit back there, make it look like it's going to be a pass or pretend a little bit, and then take off and running. <laughs> there was no pretend. No question. That will end the first quarter. No score between the Tigers and Lewis Central back after this. You want to get stronger, faster, healthier. You want more. You want to be part of something bigger than yourself. A place for people of all ages, all walks of life, that provides opportunities for all to succeed. We do that. We're the why. Build more than muscle. Build a stronger community. When people visit the Lodge of Ashworth, they fall in love with our grounds. They're impressed with our dining room, but it is our spacious two and three bedroom suites that attract the most attention. With bay windows, full kitchens, large walk-in closets, and modern appliances, the Lodge feels like home. We have suites move in ready, or we will help you customize, create a home office, media room, or bedroom for visiting friends or family. Call us today for a private tour and ask about our flexible pricing plans. Max Duggan back to pass, looks the left side, throws, incomplete. He was throwing towards the left hash on a simple post route, breaking it up and actually in better position was Noah Samples for Valley. And, As the uh, ball was underthrown, the intended receiver was Zach Shipman, incomplete. The 124 mile an hour wind was kind of had a little effect on it as well. I'll tell you what, it is erratic, that wind. <laughs> that wind. 31 yard line of Valley is where the football is for Lewis Central. In the shotgun as we get going on the second play of the second quarter. Duggan's just going to run it and he is going to be popped and then still fall forward for three yards. He is going to be close. In fact, he is going to get the first down as making the stop for the Tigers is John Shaner. One of the things that Coach Rebarger was very concerned about tonight, uh, Valley's defensive coordinator, was what type of a night was Duggan going to have and what kind of decisions was he going to make is he going to spread the ball around, or is he just going to take it upon himself and move it? There are four receivers on the left side of this formation for Duggan, one to the right. And that's the look-left throw, and it's caught inside the 30. Still on his feet are the Titans. And Josh Simmons, he gets... Well, they will not mark him out at the 20, so that's a lot of work for six yards. But it's still a play... Put it into the hands of the defen uh, the offender and just let him go, right? That's right. And, you know, when they bring out four receivers to one side, uh, two of those guys had to be on the line of scrimmage. So depending on what the inside receiver does, if he, if he goes downfield, you know it's either got to be in the backfield or a run. Otherwise, it's illegal man downfield. 
Handoff, D'Angelo underneath, spins out of the first tackle, and he's still on his feet into the 10, knocked out of bounds. Before heading out of bounds uh, by Noah Samples, that's a first down move, the chains for the Titans. A great run. That kid is slippery. He was in a mess and was able to spin his way out uh, which if uh, you're Valley's defense, you now realize you're going to have to wrap up and make tackles. Tigers are trying to make uh, some substitutions. I don't know if they're going to get them off on time. They do. Trying to stop this defense. Duggan runs to the right side. He's still on his feet. Spins his way inside the five, four, three, down at the two. What a run, Max Duggan. He is very impressive. Paul, I'm going to tell you how impressive Max Duggan is as a football player. At the state track meet last year, the Iowa football coaches were there watching him run all day in the rain. So that says something about his athleticism and how much they want him. Duggan under center, sneaks it off left tackle, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown! Lewis Central, and they score first in this playoff game. So the, the question always comes up, how many points does a team get off of turnovers? And right now, it's a 6-0 game, and it's 6-0 off of turnovers. Max Duggan, the extra point. The kick is up from Drake Nettles good and Lewis Central has a 7 nothing lead on CISN.tv. Okay ladies, it's October and we all know what that means. Time for our annual mammograms. Iowa Radiology believes that mammograms are the best way to catch breast cancers early and save lives. With 3D and low-dose technology, they are now more accurate and safe. It's only once a year, and if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your daughters, your friend, your sons, or your family. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Building a strong... Points off of turnovers. We talk about it during the regular season. They become even more important in the postseason. A fumble back at the 38-yard line creates a short field for the Tigers, or for the, the Titans, who make the Tigers pay on that fumble. Lewis Central on a two-yard touchdown run by Max Duggan. That was all Max Duggan. He had runs of seven, five, nine, and two on that drive. Six plays, 38 yards, seven nothing, Lewis Central. As the Titans are ready to kick it off here, anything's possible, long or short, looks to be a full kick. It's a low liner, returnable, back at the 10 for the Tigers, still on his feet. And moving forward is Creighton Mitchell, who gets up to about the 32 yard line. Return of 19 on the play. It'll be first down and 10 for the Tigers, Keith Bornis. It was a great kick. You know, sometimes you have to question, what are they going to do after a touchdown score? A lot of energy. Do you kick, try and kick it deep? Do you try and put it on the ground? Do you try and do an onside kick? Uh, and into this 212-mile-an-hour wind, a great kick, not very high off the ground, and it rolled down to almost the 10-yard line. Lombardi comes back out with the Tiger offense on the left side of your radio, going to the right now. Lombardi looks to the left, goes back to the right for the throw, caught by Tariq Brown across midfield and into Lewis Central territory. That was a tough play, but Tariq Brown delivered the team's leading receiver with number 48 on the season. And a great play by Josh Simmons. He came up, made a great tackle, and he hit Brown at the same time the ball came in. So great concentration by Brown as well to haul that in. Gain of 20 on the play up to the 
47 of Valley, or of Lewis Central. Trying to go left is Javon Mason. He's going to cut it back to the right. He has some turf. He is still going to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. Somehow only makes it a one-yard, maybe two-yard loss, and that should have been a loss of 15. Yeah, kind of an ill-advised turn back, but he did have several people uh, in the in his in his to help out with uh with the path the problem was that because he had so many people on the back side to block for him that's why the play wasn't set up on the front side valley didn't move their feet fast enough to get out and get those lead blocks lewis so central does have a player down right in front of us here at the 50 yard line down on the near side of the field about five yards away from the valley sideline and Laying on that turf tonight isn't exactly the warmest place to be. Not so much. And sitting up now is uh, Colby Roth. He was in on that play and probably gets at least a half a tackle credit on that. Colby Roth is uh, the team's second leading tackler behind Hayden Hatcher. As a sophomore. And you know, this team, you've got a, Duggan's only a junior. And you've got some of these other kids that are sophomores that are very good players. I told I told Coach Duggan uh, yesterday, and I said, I go, you do realize nobody wants to play you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, you know, I think we got a good football team, and I, I think uh, uh, any of the teams that they beat, Harlan, Council Bluffs, Abe Lincoln, Northeast, uh, Urbandale is who they lost to, Hoover, Ankeny, TJ, and North will all say, yeah, that was a good football team. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Urbandale was their lone loss, 13-7. Urbandale is the district champ, so they are hosting Dowling Catholic tonight there. Uh, Pretty easy draw. Uh, lots of good crowd. Lombardi's pocket is collapsing, and his receiver's nowhere to throw. Throws downfield. Got a man! Brown over his head, incomplete. And I'll tell you what, that's one of the easiest-looking throws Lombardi has made all season, Keith. Just a little bit over Brown's head kind of looks like that other Lombardi that wore number 12 little, last season. Yeah, a little bit. And it, The one thing as a quarterback, especially a quarterback, again, who did not play last year at that position, and really the first night playing in a 300-mile-an-hour wind, you got to figure out what kind of touch do you have and to make that. And then the other thing is when they come back and look at film, he may have been able to run for the first down. Yeah, it would have been tough. And I was looking at Lombardi. I didn't see where that was. They go back underneath to Mason on the play action. Mason's going to get up to the 45, and it'll be third. That was on third down. It'll be fourth and about eight now. And Valley might be thinking four downs, and I think they are. So they were just trying to cut the distance almost in half. But now you can still have uh, – you're still leaving Lombardi out. Gain of four. What are the Tigers going to do here? They're going to keep the offense – with the wind at their back, and instead call timeout. 7 nothing. Lewis Central leads. This is CISN.TV. Truck month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet in Waukee means 0% for 72 months on all 17 Silverados and Colorados. For a limited time, 20% off 17 Cruise, Trax, and Malibu. New 18 Equinox. Power trucks shoot 24 per month. 0% for 72 months on a huge selection of 17 Silverado and Colorados. It's truck month in Waukee. Schottenkirk Chevrolet on the west end of Hickman, Waukee. And here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live, of perseverance and progress. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream, we make history. This is Valley went to the timeout with the quarterback on the field. He's now off. Mason is still back there, but he's been playing punter. Mason's going to roll out to the left side and throw it short and try to pin. Gets a little bit of a roll. Maybe, oh, two, and then it does take a Valley roll and will go out of bounds at the 15. So that drive stalls out after four plays. 
A great defensive stand there by uh, Lewis Central and a pretty good punt uh, by Mason. Uh, got a great uh, chipping roll. Is it a chip shot roll? Yeah. And uh, rolled it from the, uh, about landed about on the uh, 24, rolled down to the 15, so nice work. The ball is on the uh, Lewis Central side of the field, 15 yard line. Here come the Titans, already up 7-0 in their road white uniforms. Hand off D'Angelo Bradford. Huge hole up the middle, still on his feet, and the only thing that can tackle him is the grass. He's at the 30, 25, 20, makes one guy miss, still zigging, zagging his way into the end zone. Touchdown! Lewis Central, no flags. Huge play. D'Angelo Bridgeford, 85 yards. Wow, what an explosive back coming up through. And uh, there was nobody there for Valley as uh, everybody was out, spread out on those uh, doubles and uh, trips as far as receivers are concerned. Great play call at a great time for Lewis Central. One play, 85 yards, touchdown Lewis Central. On to attempt the extra point is Drake Nettles. And his kick is up and good and goes, <laughs> does it only have to break the plane? Well, I was going to say, if it goes over but then comes back through, <laughs> when you're playing in a 334-mile-an-hour wind, it's pretty tough to drive that ball anywhere. But it did go through, and it did stay through. That ball just, it wasn't just the spin. It absolutely was the wind. And at 300, I'm sorry, 324? 312, 334. 34. 34. 34. Yeah, the heavy stuff's not coming down for a little <laughs> while longer on the wind. The wind is out of the northwest at 19 miles an hour, 34 degrees. We're going to hover at that temp, maybe even eke out one more. But right now, it is all Lewis Central leading 14 0 on an 85 yard touchdown run, D'Angelo Bradford. And as we were talking earlier, this is, you know, it's 0-0 zero, zero, uh, through the first, and now all of a sudden, it is a 14-0 ball game by an explosive offense. Valley's going to have to find a way to answer to keep this thing interesting. Coach called uh, Bradford. He said, you know, he's got intangibles, and we're teaching him a lot of stuff. He said he's got raw talent. He runs hard, burst of speed. That was a blink, and he's gone. Right up the middle, the Valley's defense absolutely didn't see him. I don't think they wanted to see him, especially after he got gone. Yeah, right. And the kick is going to be taken by Valley at the 15, and now we've got a nice uh, return room, and the Tigers are still on their feet, still going up to the 48-yard line is Creighton Mitchell. Nice return. Very nice return, especially when Valley's looking for an answer to two, to a nice drive after the turnover and a huge play. Valley will start at the 49. They've started very close to this uh, before. And so now I got a couple of scores here. I will get in in just a moment. Valley on first down, Lombardi in the shotgun, looks left throws, and incomplete, going back for Mitchell. It'll be second down. Urbandale trails at home tonight to Dowling, 17 nothing is the score there. Southeast Polk seven, Johnston six, and Waukee trails Centennial, 10 nothing. Winner of this game does play Centennial next Friday night. We've got that playoff format where it's no longer you play Friday and you come back on Wednesday. It's Friday, Friday, Friday. I think there was a song by someone. It's Friday, Friday, and that's what it is for all these playoffs this year. Play action. Lombardi's got a lot of space, but it closes in a hurry. Thrown, tipped, caught. Tipped and then caught wow. by the same player for Valley. That is a circus catch for Carson Shelton. You know, we've seen this play out of Valley a, several times throughout the year, and I don't know if I remember a quarterback that runs the play action as well as Bo Lombardi does. 
And uh, yes, he had a lot of a lot of time to make the decision to throw it. And when he did, unfortunately, the pocket had, or the uh, throwing lane had closed down. And so the circus catch looks good on paper. Bo gives it to Fugate, who goes nowhere. He is knocked down, drug out. Uh, Colton Shue, no chance for a gain. In fact, loss of five on the play for Trey Fugate. Getting a great job by the Lewis Central defensive line, getting in and reestablishing the line of scrimmage. That allows the linebackers to uh, be free at least until uh, they get either into the backfield or outside to make tackles. Valley goes play action again. Lombardi throws down the middle. Tipped again. Caught down to the two-yard line. Oh, Jalen Long again had to tip his own pass. He got over the defender of Zach Shipman. Shipman kind of went for it. It was tipped up, and somehow... Jalen Long kept it alive, and if he doesn't lose his balance, it's a touchdown. Instead, it's down to the two-yard line. Gain of 38 yards. Great concentration by uh, Jalen Long on that. And now Valley kind of brings in the big boy offense as they are inside the five. Mason up the middle, goes off right tackle, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Javon Mason. <laughs> I would have to say that was a well-timed touchdown for the Valley Tigers. A lot of times, it's not what happens in a game that is devastating. It's the lack of a response that becomes devastating. And Valley did a nice job responding on that drive. But it started off with a great return by Creighton Mitchell. Two tipped passes as the uh, extra point is attempted and good for the Tigers. We'll step away for a moment. 14-7, we got a ball game. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, Take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. For the SEAL, it's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau SEAL means this business meets high standards. When I see the SEAL, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Tinley Wright with the extra point makes it 14-7. Council Bluffs. Lewis Central still in the lead and Wright is got help from Roy Jensen on this kick. It's a high wind aided, takes it down to the one. Lewis Central will keep on going and it's going to be returned. Still on his feet for just a moment with Simmons and he gets uh, just like it would have been if it would have let it go a yard. Comes out to the 20. You know, when you hit that ball and you're kind of expecting you got a wind aided kick you're expecting it to go into the end zone and when it doesn't it becomes pretty nerve-wracking because well you're not always in the right position <laughs> but valley did a nice job um closing in on a, on uh, the ball carrier and uh prevented them from going any further no harm no foul more of a tight formation or at least as tight as lewis central will get they got a couple of backs in the backfield, in motion on the jet sweep. Duggan fakes it and goes up the middle. Darts out of one, but he won't get out of two. Victor Areola makes the stop, and they'll give him forward progress to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. That was a nice job by uh, Victor Areola coming up to make the initial, well, actually the fourth contact. And uh, then the rest of Valley's defense 
uh, kind of came in and aided with the cause. Nice night here at Valley Stadium if you're an Eskimo. You'd call this warm. We will call this warm in about a month or two. But we're not in December or January. We're in late October. Playoff football. D'Angelo Bradford, he's not going 85 yards on that play. He maybe gets a yard. Hard going up the middle, making the stop for the Tigers is uh, Avery Benashi. Nice job by Benacci getting in there. It is a tough position playing that middle linebacker because when you're going someplace, there's usually a lot of congestion there. Hey, we got interviews coming up at halftime. We're going to talk volleyball. Did you know that? Your I, favorite. I, One of your favorites well, is going to be Well, I know here. that it's my son Ben's favorite. My gosh, that kid will sit and watch girls play volleyball for hours. Max Duggan back to pass, running for his life. He is going to throw it down the sideline. It's caught, but it's out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. It was caught by Simmons, but the problem is he didn't have either foot in bounds. That was as impressive a display of athleticism as I think I've seen all year. It was, well, I think he's going to play college ball eventually, and that looked like a college quarterback throw right on the sideline, and he kept it down the sideline close enough that uh, I questioned whether he was in or in yeah. a bounds or not on yeah, the I catch. Think coaches might throw the challenge flag on that. <laughs> The punt goes up into the air, and it's a fair catch made, or called for and made at uh, 40, the 49-yard line for the Tigers, and that was Carson Shelton. So uh, identical spot is the last drive starting at the 49-yard line of Valley. Very nice defensive uh, series there for Valley. Uh, Lewis Central just never got anything going on that offensive series. So Ronnie DiCarlo and Taylor Guion. Guion and Maddie Kubik will be coming up here at halftime talking Tiger Volleyball. Lombardi back to pass, and he is going to go down on a sack. Back at the 45-yard line, bringing the quarterback down is the big defensive lineman, Grant Rodenberg, and I tell you what, this guy is for real. This kid can play. He is 6'4", 220. Impressive looking defensive end. Yes, he did a great job. And you're, you got to credit the uh, defensive backfield by Lewis Central. That was a coverage sack because Bo Lombardi had a great job. He, the pocket started to collapse. He was able to move up, but then <laughs> there was nobody to throw to. All the way back to the, uh, it's a misdirection play. Fugate comes near side. Shakes one. That play started at the 46, gets to the 49, so it's a gain of five on the play. Valley still behind the chains on this. It's going to be a third and seven, third and eight, but uh, at least they're in between the chains now rather than way behind the chains. Four minutes to go. Valley looking to run a little bit of clock, but also try to get some offensive momentum going as uh, they trail Lewis Central 14-7 here at Valley Stadium. Fugate is next to Lombardi in the backfield. Play action. Here comes some heat. Bo steps up, throws. Caught Jalen Long. First down. Now, Paul, I ask, when you say here comes some heat, were you talking about the rush or the throw? <laughs> both both oh. had some smoke. <laughs> wow. The West Des Moines Fire Department might get called on a throw like that. He no, needs no wind. <laughs> no. Gain of 17. So the Lewis Central 32 is where the ball is placed, 327. First down and 10, a fresh set for the Tigers. Lombardi goes back under center. He'll give it to Fugate, who runs right into the back of his line. And there to make a stop is uh, Dane Theobald. Theobald. So really no gain on that play. Actually, they will give him two. Two yards. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it was because of that explosive effort right away by Fugate to get up in there. There was no question where he was going. He did not try to 
have any misdirection. He was not going to run that wide. He got two yards the hard way. Oh, and I tell you what, incomplete pass. It was intended for Carson Shelton. Shelton and I were both looking at the defender. Problem is, I'm up <laughs> here. Shelton is six inches from him, loses the concentration. It'll be third down on the incomplete pass. And one of the things that uh, Tariq Brown is doing right now is he's kind of coming back into the huddle and say, hey, listen, I don't know what kind of time you have, but I'm open. I'm running the wheel route here. When you're even, you're ahead, just like in baseball. If you're uh, a wide receiver and you're even with the defensive back, you're ahead of him. Third and eight, Tigers need to get to the 22-yard line. Lombardi, with time, throws the screen to Fugate. Trey would have been close to a first down had he been able to even get close to catching it. So now, decision time, because I think you're I think you're going to look at a timeout here, maybe to talk it over. Well, what is this? It would be a 47-yard field goal. If you put it down, it would be because the ball's at the 30. And the Tigers are going to go for it here on fourth down. They send in three receivers to the left. They haven't done that jet motion since they've been called for it. Lombardi throws it on the blitz that held up for Tariq Brown, who had one hand on it but just couldn't get his paw all the way around it. Incomplete. And the Tigers will turn it over on downs at the 229 mark in the second quarter. Lewis Central is really playing well in that defensive backfield. If you think back to two of the big pass plays that Valley completed, they were tip balls. The defensive back was right there. Uh, Valley had better concentration, so to speak, on the uh, tip ball drill. And on this series, Valley had some receivers open. They closed well uh, in the defensive backfield and disrupted everything. So Lewis Central will start at their own 30-yard line with 229, one timeout going into the wind. I don't think that matters. The, f the snap is uh, bobbled. I shouldn't say bobbled. It rolled back to, to Duggan, who somehow gets back to the 30, and he is brought down, or at least credited with the tackle will be John Shaner. You know, you look at Duggan. I mean, he's listed on the roster 6-2-190, and there is a quick timeout here on the field. As um, you know, you, you look at a, a kid who's 6-2-190, you're going to put 20, 30 pounds on him through a weight program. Mm -hmm. Getting over that six foot mark is a big deal for a quarterback. It is, and you know, I don't know what sheet you're looking at. I I have a 6-3 on him, so it really boils down to uh, what coaches want to say their height and weights are sometimes they're right on and sometimes they're not but he is tall enough to go on to the next level and do some great things but he is so athletic on that last play that we saw him run uh the snap yes it wasn't really there but he just kind of sat back and waited for potential blocks to open up and mm -hmm. when they weren't there he just bowled through and Got what he could. Now, we saw a lot of Rocky Lombardi here. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of Ryan Boyle over here. Mm -hmm. He's much more of a Ryan Boyle to me than he is a, a, a Rocky Lombardi, just for the sake of running the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think he throws the ball better than Boyle uh, did. Duggan looks to the left, throws, caught by... No, Simmons Ooh. dropped it. He tried to go upfield. He had uh, a defender breathing down. That was... Uh, Connor Shelton, incomplete. It'll be third and ten. And now all of a sudden, Lewis Central's had five. They're 0 for 5 on these last uh, five plays. They haven't really been able to get more than a yard. They haven't. But, again, you're talking about a quick strike offense. You're talking about a big play offense. Third and ten, third and 20. They still have first down potential. 217. So now all of a sudden, uh, if the Valley defense can hold, they're going to have good field position, but don't count out Doug, and he's going to be stopped, though. He can't even get back to the line of scrimmage on that play. And, you know, McCutton and Manuel, they're kind of big fellas. And Manuel was right there. Tigers take a timeout. We'll step away for the final 2-12 of the first half when we come back. 
and I opened the hearing clinic to offer patients and their families a positive healthcare experience. If you have trouble hearing clearly at church, at the movies, watching TV, or with your friends and family in a group conversation, what are you waiting for? In less than half an hour, we can give you peace of mind and answer any questions that you may have. Call us today to schedule your appointment. The Hearing Clinic, 515-440-3323. We listen, you hear. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car is on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. Drake Nettles gets a leg into it. Nice kick into the teeth of that wind and sends Valley to about the 47. No return on the play. In fact, it didn't really bounce that far either. It kind of just went horizontal. Wind still out of that northwest, kind of hard to move. 14-7, Council Bluffs. Lewis Central leads the Valley Tigers here at Valley Stadium, Paul Yeager alongside Keith Bornis as we are at two minutes, three seconds to go before half. The Tiger offense has kind of started to find its footing a little bit, uh, trying to uh, score here before half. They've got uh, 53 yards to go, and it's a passing situation, and it's dropped by Luke Matney out of the backfield. No, that's Javon Mason, sorry. Would have been a couple of yards. And that's a couple of drops on that screen, Ooh. and that's the easy pass. Yes. If, uh, if the pass that goes right through your hands is dropped, it's not looking good for the ones that are close that you really have to make a move and, and, and get your, the stick them on, if you will, as far as getting those pass completions. Lombardi's pa uh, pocket collapses, throws down, floated, intercepted, picked off by the Titans, and then tackled at midfield. Making the interception for Lewis Central, as you guessed it, Hayden Hatcher. Not only does he make every tackle, he's now making INTs, and so Lewis Central have a minute 49 to go, no timeouts, and 51 yards to the house. The uh, wide receiver for uh, Valley, Luke Matney, was down on the ground. Even if he'd have been up on his feet, I don't know that uh, the pass would have been, that the play would have ended any differently. That ball went right into Lewis Central's hands. It's on the 49 yard line, going right to left. Duggan comes back out, trying to find something for that offense. It's going down right away. Laser, and that's nearly picked off. Almost with it is uh, John Shaner. And he had a lot of real estate in front of him. He went for broke on that. You, you tell that, uh, that defensive back, you better darn well make sure you're going to get it because if you get burned, we're in, we might as well not make it into the locker room. <laughs> yeah. You just keep on going and climb on their bus. And I think the volleyball players are ready to be inside for a few minutes. They might not want to leave, Coach. Yeah, <laughs> but they're smiling. They are smiling. Their, fa their faces are frozen. That's right. That Teeth formation. are chattering. Second down in 10. Minute 44, Duggan, quarterback draw up the middle. He is going to be ripped and thrown for a loss. And uh, that was Logan Cruzman. Logan Cruzman is a name that you have kind of called all year. He has been in the right spot at the right time, and he's got a great frame to uh, play that defensive end position. Clock moving, and Lewis Central now not really in a hurry at third down and nine yards. They have 13 seconds on the play clock. They're basically going to run it now just to not allow Valley any time. But never count them out. That could just be one of those let's lull you to sleep type mm -hmm. moves. Duggan on the quarterback keeper up the middle. Darts it out back outside, still on his feet. He's near first down and has got it. Up to the 40 to stop the clock. He was dead to rights inside at the 48. He cut it back outside, and now all of a sudden, you're under 53 seconds. That's a different mentality now. You're going for six. 
in the sights of 11 defensive players and snuck out of all of them. Duggan calls out the play. Clock moves as soon as the uh, chains were set. Lewis Central struggling. Play clock down at eight. A lot of tension going. Snap of the ball. And it's going to be a legal procedure. I think uh, the center was the last to know what the play, uh, what the, uh, the snap was on. But they also have a little chance to uh, make a quick decision on the sideline. It's a beautiful way to stop the clock there, uh, Paul Yeager. Well, but you also lost to 15 to 20 seconds with that indecision. Well, that's true. 28.7 seconds to go before half. Lewis Central has the football, 45-yard line. Probably into that wind, you're going to have to get that ball down inside the 20 to almost the 10. So you got to get it 25 yards to have a chance at three points. Duggan, back to pass, throws. Incomplete. It's going to bounce before uh, Zach Brown. No relation to the band. And that'll be 23 seconds to go. You big Zach Brown fan, fan, Key? Uh, the jury's still out. I've heard him, them. You knew him before he was a big deal? Kind of. Yeah. 23 seconds, second and 15. Lewis Central still feeling that they have a chance. Duggan throws, hit as he throws, caught! And that's going to be close to being the last play of the half because it's way inbounds. And I don't think Lewis Central, they might well, try trying. to clock it yeah. to give them a chance at the end zone. Five seconds, four seconds, three, it's two. It's not going to happen. Snap, snap, snap. The right tackle moved. Everybody was moving. Valley's just going to head to the locker room. Coach, I don't know. I don't think either team really cares. Not so much. <laughs> That'll end the first half. I've seen on some. On a defensive penalty yeah. there. <laughs> offensive penalty. Our offensive penalty. I, uh, I, you know, we've been watching some players on the field here. They've been moving very fast, but I tell you, getting from the sideline to the locker room, they were some, there was some hustle there. Just to remind you, this audio coverage only is we're allowed by the Iowa High School Athletic Association. That's why you're only seeing the scoreboard. And right now it says Lewis Central 14, Valley 7. When we come back, we'll talk volleyball. We'll look at scores and we'll get Keith warmed up. This is CISN.TV. Miss your hometown clothing store? The one that had it all? Everything to get the work done all in one place? g &L Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. G&L Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. G&L Clothing, your size, your style, we ready now. Hey ladies, it's October and we all know what that means. Time to for our annual mammograms. Iowa Radiology believes that mammograms are the best way to catch breast cancers early and save lives. With 3D and low-dose technology, they are now more accurate and safe. It's only once a year, and if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your daughters, your friend, your sons, or your family. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. Many times at the Lodge of Ashworth, new members come to us from their big, beautiful homes. They find our spacious two and three bedroom suites to be an ideal fit. We have a limited number of these larger and penthouse style suites, perfect for the retiring executive's style living. We have suites ready for immediate move in or we can help you customize. The Lodge of Ashworth is all inclusive, no surprise additional fees or upcharges. Call us today for a private tour and ask us about our flexible pricing plans. They think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the tea. to the Godfather's Specialty Pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all-meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. The other guys. 
Back at Valley Stadium, Paul Yeager here on CISN.TV. As uh, you really get audio only, and yes, you see the scoreboard, but that's just, uh, those are the rules tonight, but you don't get to see Ronnie DiCarlo or Maddie Kubik. You just get to hear them. Uh, so, so first off, ladies, is it warmer up here? Yes, much warmer. <laughs> much warmer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is cold. Do you go to a lot of the, uh, do you go to a lot of the volley, uh, the bas uh, well, let's, we'll call it football. <laughs> it even freezes my brain sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I've been to most of them. We haven't been able to go to some of the away ones because we've had to be home for curfew. But <laughs> right, yeah, all we the with our Saturday ones. tournaments. Yeah. yeah, hold on, Maddie, put that up more, a little more towards the mouth. If you're ever going to work in television after <laughs> your volleyball, <laughs> we got to get you the fundamentals down here because right, right. Ronnie's got the mic held just properly. So <laughs> uh, you've still got some games. Uh, you've at least got one more. Uh, you're in the postseason now. So tell me, Ronnie, when you've played this week? This coming week. When have when you played, played oh, we in the played last? Last Tuesday. Want to get stronger, faster, healthier. You want more. You want to be part of something. Every Monday, and we play against Council Bluffs Abraham Lincoln. You play against AL. Yeah. Is that over here? Yeah, yeah. that'll be that Valley. And yeah. and then that's the regional final, or you've got uh, one more after that. Yeah, that is yep. it. So that's the game it. to go to state to Cedar Rapids. So, yep. uh, what are you thinking, Maddie? Is that uh, is that uh, what this team's uh, goal is? Is to uh, Oh, to keep going east? Absolutely, yeah. Our goal is, is to be in the state championship match, so I mean, we're super excited for that match on Monday and um, kind of just get after it and go back to Cedar Rapids and yeah. <laughs> kind of finish some business that we didn't finish last year. Now, we shouldn't laugh at Maddie because if she doesn't know where it is. I mean, this girl no, has traveled I a whole bunch it. this year. I mean, we were talking about this earlier and we were down there. Oh, wait, I was like, it's in Cedar, Cedar Falls. Rapids, right? she yeah, Cedar, Cedar Falls. Falls, you know, that's where They're football Cedar. goes. They're and the then same. Cedar Rapids. They're same in your brain. They're only <laughs> about an hour apart. I know. I was like, we just get on the bus and go. And yeah. they just take you to where it needs to go. You don't care. Yeah. As long as they have a net, provide, yeah. provide a volleyball, you'll be fine. Uh, but you got to get there first. Maddie, you've had uh, quite the last few months uh, playing volleyball. I mean, it seems like every time I, I read something about you, you're playing somewhere else. Where have you yeah. all been this year? Um, so I was playing with the youth national team um, for about a month this summer. Um, we were in Colorado Springs for about two weeks training, and they kind of, like, made their final cuts and to make our final roster. And then we are in Brazil training for about a week and a half, ready for the um, world championships that were in uh, Santa Fe, Argentina. So we were over there. Um, we ended eighth. So we played some really good teams. Um, Italy ended up winning it, who we played really early in Brazil, which um, – they're a really great team, a lot of really good volleyball. So I learned a lot. It was a really great experience being over there. And what was the name of the team that you were playing with? Um, the girls youth national, like United States youth national team. Youth national team, 17 and under? Uh, 18 18 U. and under, yep. 18 U. And so you're playing other teams around the world that are that same age uh, around the world. What's that experience like? Uh, it's, it's very humbling to play for your country. I, I'd never had that kind of experience before. So um, kind of getting, like, to sing our national anthem and, like, the pride that they have for their countries is like really eye-opening to see and um, it like it's just really um, humbling to play against other countries. So you weren't here much this summer right? You were gone a lot. In fact right. were you even late to getting to uh, fall camp for the team? Yeah so I missed all of preseason which kind of stunk um, not being there with my team and getting to train and kind of get the beginning of the season rolling that kind of thing um, but just it was coming back in everyone was uh, everyone was working hard and um, it was a good environment to come back into and um, start the season. So, Ronnie, how uh, how difficult did you make it on her life when she came back to practice? <laughs> Finally, and says, "Well, glad you could grace us with your presence." Yeah, it was really exciting when she came back. Everyone was really happy to have her because we're all really close friends, and we all really missed her. But we were cheering her on as she was gone. Did you watch any of those games? Yeah, uh, when you we, could on the internet. We tried to watch one when. We, but we were at a tournament, so we weren't able to. We were going to watch it as a team, but I think a lot of us watched it on our own at home. And I'm guessing you uh, didn't uh, take the summer off from volleyball either. Oh, no. <laughs> spent many days in the gym. Where, uh, where were some of the places you played this year in the off season with camps and, um, and travel and we, things like that? Just like a lot of our camps at Valley that Michael put on. And then uh, we played our little like scrimmage thing at Grandview, and then we went to Central. And I think, yeah, that's yeah. about it. Yeah, done year. that. Uh, what's been fun about volleyball for you this year? Everything. It's We're all really close friends. We get along really well. It's We're not just teammates, but more of like a family, and it's been a lot of fun to play with all the girls. So, Maddie, you know these girls uh, since you were, you know, this high, and you've been <laughs> playing in third, fourth grade, things like that. 
what is that like to then meet a new team and still try to have some of that same gelling? How do you do that as an athlete? Where you, you have to remember, these I'm playing for my country, but these I'm playing <laughs> for my heart, you know, that type of thing. Right, yeah. It's just, I feel like it's kind of, like, it's not the same, but it is the same. Because, like, you're still playing the sport you love. You're still playing with people that you love playing with. So I feel like that's kind of the same aspect and kind of bringing that same expectation level to each other and um, just being a good teammate. I feel like that's really important. I, I, do you do the same type of team bonding experiences on a, on a big, you know, national team like that? Um, I mean, there are a lot of things that we talk about in our practices, like value-wise, that we talked about at the my USA experience. Um, we talked a lot about, like, knowing who you represent and, like, playing for something bigger than yourself and, um, like, representing what we're, what we're playing for and that kind of thing. So, yeah. so what's it like to put the Valley jersey on and play? Oh, it's just as much fun. I mean, I love playing with, I love playing with my teammates, and I love uh, playing at Valley, just representing that as much as I love playing for the United States. And that's, that's Maddie Kubik and Ronnie DiCarlo. Ronnie, uh, what are your plans uh, next year? Uh, right now I'm considering. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to Iowa State. Not for sure yet, but that's where I'm looking right now. Are you done playing volleyball? I will be done after this season. Yeah. Do you do any other sports? Uh, nope. Quite them all for volleyball. That's all for volleyball. What do you want to study at Iowa State? Right now I'm thinking education, but still not sure. Elementary, middle, yeah. high school? Elementary. Elementary, yeah. elementary school. Maddie, what about you? What have you decided yet? Um, well, I am verbally committed to play in Nebraska. Um, so I'll be graduating early. So next January, um, I'll leave and go play. I'll start my first season and be a student that sand season or that spring. Um, so, yeah, I'm super excited. And that's something that happened with uh, one of your other teammates last year, right? Went yes. to Baylor. Mm -hmm. uh, Hannah. Hannah. Lockin. That's and, and so did you talk at all with her when running that through as, uh, hey, does this really work? Is this a good idea? Absolutely. I really took her, um, like, feedback to, to heart because I was, I was kind of, like, really struggling with it, not really knowing what to decide. And um, she just talked to me about how it's a really great opportunity to play as a freshman and kind of get that first spring semester under your belt. Um, so I just thought, I just understand it's a big opportunity if I have plans to go play as a freshman at Nebraska. And what are you going to study? I have no idea. <laughs> Still thinking. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, what is it about the Nebraska program that uh, interested you? Um, I, I love the game atmosphere. They bring such an amazing crowd and such an amazing um, support system for their program. And um, their facilities and their coaching staff, I just really clicked with them and all the girls. It's, a, it's just a really great place to be, and I'm super excited to be there. We all know that... Nebraska football is a lifestyle, but I don't know how many people realize how big of a deal volleyball is in the state of Nebraska, especially in Lincoln. I feel like they recognize it. I mean, they, they sold out their arena almost like 200 games in a row, so it, it's a great atmosphere. It's a great fan base, and it's, yeah, it's, it's an honor to be able to go there. But she won't be there for prom. She won't no. be there for graduation. I, Have I, you been giving her a hard time about that? Yeah, I mean, we've talked to her, but... I mean, it's what she loves, and it's going to be worth it in the end. I mean, she'll still be able to come back and visit. And like Hannah, last year she came back for prom and stuff, so it'll be worth it in the end, you, I think. You can still do that thing. Yeah. Uh, not saying that this could be the last game, but maybe this is the last football I game. I mean, you, one of those last things. What have, what have you seen in the first half in this football game? What, 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 what are your – uh, classmates need to do to, to get on the <laughs> other side of the scoreboard here? Um, I don't know. I think they've been working hard. Obviously, they're struggling a little bit. I think they need to keep throwing it because that's been what's working, but I'm sure they'll come out with strong intensity. <laughs> yeah. uh, Maddie, do you, do you agree? Same thing? you got to throw the ball more? I just, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like they're working hard. Yeah, mix it up. <laughs> Use some different offense. So you don't study football much no. is what neither one of you are telling me. <laughs> we just cheer really hard. Yeah, we yeah. Just, we're here <laughs> for the support. <laughs> so now Coach Bornis is, is here, and he was saying his son likes to come watch uh, the volleyball team. Yeah, we always see him. He's when Ben's child. there, uh, where should people come? What is important about having fans support from Ben on up uh, to come to your games? I feel like it just goes to show that, like, we have such a young um, – we have such, so many young siblings and, like, their little friends and so just like to represent and show them like what Valley Volleyball is about and kind of give them role models to be like that and, and when they get older. 
every person that shows up helps us out. Yeah. That's true. Absolutely. Yep. And so where do they go now? What day? Uh, Valley High School at 7. On Tuesday. Um, Monday. Monday. Monday night. Yep. And this is the game to go to state. You get the yep. banner, and you'll probably, if you advance, it might say, I punched my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Berger from the union will be there, maybe, you know? I mean, Hopefully. That's I mean, kind of exciting. That's, that's yeah. the plan. <laughs> and if all goes well, you'll be on the finals in Iowa Public Television in yeah. a couple of weeks. A couple of awesome. Fridays from now, actually. It's been our so. goal since yeah. the beginning of the season. Yeah. Yep. And probably longer. Yeah. <laughs> probably something you thought about a yeah. lot going since on all those camps this summer. Playing. Yeah. Dowling lost freshman yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we don't talk about that. <laughs> All right. That's Maddie Kubik and uh, Ronnie DiCarlo. They play Monday night against Council Bluffs. Abe Lincoln at uh, Coles Field House. 7 o'clock. They want to see you there, right? Absolutely. Yes, please. All right, ladies. Thank you very much. Let's get warm. you got th about three, four minutes before the second <laughs> half starts. Coach Bornis and I break it down. It's uh, Council Bluffs, Lewis Central, 14 Valley 7. Back here in a moment on CISN.TV. Bigger than yourself. A place for people of all ages all walks of life that provides opportunities for all to succeed we do that we're the why build more than muscle build a stronger community when people visit the lodge of ashworth they fall in love with our grounds they're impressed with our dining room but it is our spacious two and three bedroom suites that attract the most attention with bay windows, full kitchens, large walk-in closets, and modern appliances, the Lodge feels like home. We have suites move-in ready, or we will help you customize. Create a home office, media room, or bedroom for visiting friends or family. Call us today for a private tour and ask about our flexible pricing plans. Okay, ladies, it's October, and we all know what that means. Time for our annual mammograms. Iowa Radiology believes that mammograms are the best way to catch breast cancers early and save lives. With 3D and low-dose technology, they are now more accurate and safe. It's only once a year, and if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your daughters, your friend, your sons, or your family. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. Community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Building a strong community doesn't. Welcome back inside of the press box here at Valley Stadium. Paul Yeager along with Keith Bornis as we get you ready for half number two as the teams make their way back out. Keith, uh, what do you think they were discussing there at half? Well, I would say that Lewis Central is talking about the fact that they're a very good ball team. They have everything right where they want it to go. They just need to finish things. And they're also going to be talking about what they're going to do to try and get done on their first offensive series because they're going to get the ball to start the second half. Valley is talking about the fact that they have had several missed opportunities. Um, drives have stalled. Turnovers have hurt them. Uh, they get that one fumble back. They don't get the points off the turnover. We're looking at a 7-7 game. Uh, so this thing can still go a lot of different directions. Lewis Central, keep things rolling. Valley High School, finish plays. Well, Lewis Central has, uh, we, we talked about Max Duggan. Um, you know, the gals were saying, you know, what should you do from a layman's perspective? You say <laughs> throw the football, but in a sense they are right. A little bit, you know. And it's not that Valley hasn't made the attempt to throw the ball. It's that they haven't. Uh, completed the passes and the routes haven't been as crisp and uh, you credit Lewis Central for the defensive back play that they have had all night and they're in the passing lanes they are in uh, the receivers faces uh, they're just right now they're out competing Valley well and that is something that uh, you got to figure out who wants it and I, I, I do think both teams want it and when you only have the eight teams on, on either side of the state, you know, there are nights when it, if this was the cold night and you were having a one versus a four seed, mm -hmm. you know, and a, as a team that doesn't belong in the playoffs like we had for a few years, mm -hmm. I certainly think we would have the bus warmed up already f for that team that was down. Right. Um, you're down 14-7. 
this game absolutely not over. Well, no. You know, as we kind of talked in the first quarter, was zero zero. It could have been a. Uh, it could it could end a fourteen seven game. It could end a. 49-42 game. Both teams have the potential to score a lot of points and score them quickly. And uh, the one thing that both teams have, are doing that I, I'm, I'm actually very impressed by Lewis Central's defense right now, they're holding a very potent Valley offense to not much. And Valley, their defense is holding Max Duggan pretty well. If you'd have told me at halftime that Valley was only going to allow 14 points by a very dangerous quarterback, I'd have said, wow, Valley's going to be in pretty good shape. Well, and Valley, um, you know, the first uh, four plays of the game on the offensive side of the ball were all Javon Mason. Mm -hmm. Every time Mason's tried to run the ball, he's looked like uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes trying to run off tackle right, and it just doesn't work. Right. It's, it's just not there. And so... You're either going to have to do more misdirection, allow Rocky or Bo to... Well, I said Rocky. Yeah. That's what's yeah. gotten in your head. My apologies, To al allow Bo, who has done such an amazing job on play action, he can set up some things, but he's going to need a little bit more time as the defensive backs are that tight on the receivers. He's doing about a five-step drop and not a seven, mm -hmm. and that five is they're getting, two, they're getting the two ends to crash and push those tackles back into him. Mm -hmm. And it's just not allowed for him for a lot of time. Right. If it's a situation where if Valley's tackles can keep the ends out just a little bit more, it's going to give him another half second to make a decision. Halftime is over. It's now time for quarter number three. Paul Yeager, Keith Bornis on CISN.TV. And it's time to... Open the window back up and get that microphone back out to here. Listen, we are at a football game. Valley in their black home uniforms with white numbers. Kick it off, Tinsley Wright. It's going to go over the head of Josh Simmons into the end zone touchback. That thing just about <laughs> went back out at the one-yard line, and that would have been disaster for Lewis Central, who will start the third quarter with the football and the wind at the 20-yard line. Paul Yeager, Keith Bornis on the audio version of CISN.TV tonight per the rules of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. So, yes, we do know we only have the scoreboard, but we're just happy to be able to show you the scoreboard tonight. That was a great kick by Tinsley Wright into a 312-mile-an-hour Oh, it's wind. gone down. A little bit, 312. And it's going to warm up. Does it just think about this when you get to the spring for those girls track meets, Keith? You're going to think this is warm. That's right. First and ten, they go uh, on the jet to Dane Norville, and he gets four yards. That was an impressive run, and here's why: Valley was right there to make the tackle. They had. Uh, Noah Samples was right there, had him wrapped up. But at the same time he was, had him wrapped up, he actually got peeled off by the wide receiver, and uh, that sprung Norville instead of a two-yard loss to a four-yard gain. Max Duggan in the shotgun. D'Angelo Bradford has got uh, really all that matters is the 85-yard touchdown run for him uh, tonight. Duggan goes left side, and Bradford did not quite get the block. I think he was supposed to get Bracken Cobb on that play, and somehow Duggan gets a yard. Yes, Bracken Cobb was all over him, did a great heel pick for a two-point takedown. And, uh, yeah, that was impressive because Bracken had to make up some ground. I don't know how you keep your sport straight all the time, Keith. <laughs> I'm impressed. Duggan will have it third and five. Three to the near, one to the far side. Duggan throws a laser, and it's caught. First down, and then some for Dane Norville up to the 32-yard line, gain of seven. That's two plays to Norville on this drive so far, Keith. Actually, he gets up to the 33, make it a gain of eight. Yes, and he's, of those three, up oh, the two plays of that went to him, Averaged six yards per play on that. Uh, they have some very impressive athletes. 
And what's really impressive right now is the time that the offensive line is giving uh, Duggan in the backfield. Shotgun, lots of times, and then all of a sudden the clock expires. It hit midnight as Darius <laughs> and Adrian, Guzman and Manuel, sacks Duggan all the way back to the 28-yard line. And when you say it just all of a sudden collapsed on him, it did. I thought Duggan was going to have all night to make that throw. And somehow off both edges, they were able to rip through, and it collapsed quick. Loss of five, nine and a half to play. Second down, 15 yards to go. As Lewis Central now, three receivers to the left. Bradford next. Play action, they go back out. Norville drops it, but he's gonna fall on it just in case. They're gonna say it was an incomplete pass. Uh, that's good heads up play by Norville to fall on that just in case mm -hmm. the referee didn't think it was forward. Incomplete, it'll be third down. Now they talk about, you know, staying ahead of the chains and you know, what is third and 15 to the normal team? What is third and 15 to Lewis Central? Uh, to the normal team, third and 15 is third and forever. To Lewis Central, it's just a little extra <laughs> mustard on the pass, you know? Yeah, I remember Max as a freshman uh, watching him and, you know, hearing good things about him. And, man, he has only gotten better and is as good as advertised. Duggan on third and 15. Shotgun, play action. They're going deep down the far sideline over the intended receiver. And I'll tell you what, I think uh, I think Zach Shipman thought he had a little help to the turf a little early. <laughs> it'll be incomplete. And it'll be fourth down punting time. You know, and the thing about Duggan that, that Coach uh, Swenson was, was saying, he goes, you know, I go, what makes him such a good quarterback? And he says, you know, he can throw the deep ball. A lot of guys can throw that out, but he has got the touch on the post, the touch on the flag, the touch on the, the you know the fly, and that that's great. And it's nearly Ooh. blocked by Ari, or uh, by Guzman, and there is a penalty back at the punter. So whatever happens here is irrelevant. But even if it's, it depends on if it was running into, or if it was roughing. They're not automatic first downs. So it could be a five yard, it could be a 15 yard. We'll find out here in a moment. The ball was returned up to the 45 of Lewis Central. The, the Titans were facing fourth and 15. And now on the far sideline, the Lewis Central staff is trying to plead their case. In. The ball sits at the 45 of Lewis Central. So running into running the kicker, into, not so roughing. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. They're going to end up re-kicking. And if you get that ball up into that wind, it still is a, allegedly around 20 miles an hour, but it is a strong 20. Nettles will now go back and uh, have to come closer to the valley sideline or the uh, the valley side of the field here. Mm -hmm. 8.55 to play. And Valley had pressure from the edges, and I thought for a moment that Guzman was going to get it. And this one gets away by Nettles. This one's an even better kick. And it's taken back at the 25-yard line by Valley's Carson Shelton, and he returns it about... 15 yards to the 41 yard line and the Tigers will have their first offensive series of the second half. So Lewis Central accepts the penalty, they re-punt they gain about 15 yards yeah, 15. Uh, 15, 20 yards 15. on the play? Yeah, yeah it would have been about the 45 and uh, so great decision by Lewis Central but Valley? They're just happy to have the ball. Right, because that could have easily, if that was a roughing. Mm -hmm. And there was just an announcement by the official, and I didn't hear it. 
the diehard crowd here, I would guess there's just almost as many on that far sideline as they're on the near mm -hmm. side. Some diehard students tonight making the, the trip. I see the the marching or the what's left of the marching band is the pet band doing some jumping jacks to stay warm. Because putting that tuba up to your lips can cause frostbite. I'd think a little bit. But you know, for playing a musical instrument in this, I triple dog dare him to do it. <laughs> So there is a penalty on Valley, and it'll go back to the... Well, I wonder if they saw a block in the back okay. over on the far side, and uh, it wasn't anything that I felt was going to be malicious by any means, but still could have been a block in the back. And even further back. So two of them? Are there two penalties? And you mark them off both? Uh, you can, depending on what kind of penalties they are. So one of them probably oh, some ill-advised conversation, and so personal, now personal foul type things. All of a sudden, and Swenson is all the way out. Coach Swenson is all the way out at the numbers trying to get an explanation. And he's saying it's on the far sideline. They're going to hold up action for just a minute. Coach was all the way, he was borderline approaching the hash. Yeah, and that's about the time where there's another coach that would be assigned to Coach Swenson <laughs> to remind him where he is on the field. If you're just trying to get an explanation, I think you're allowed that once. <laughs> you can't keep <laughs> pleading. Once you're told, you got to go away. Yeah. So the ball goes all the way back. Valley now inside their own 15 to the 13-yard line. So they were going to be at the 40 where the return was. Mm -hmm. And, Keith, you kind of joked about they're just happy to have the ball. Well, they are at this point, but I don't know how crazy they are about a thir back at their own 13. Under center, Lombardi handoff, Javon Mason goes off right guard and uh, going not much further than the line of scrimmage because of Colton's shoe, mm -hmm. gain of one. You know, but to have a silver lining in all of this, Paul, the chains moved with them, so right. it's not first and forever. It was still first and ten. Uh, now, of course, just second and nine and a half. Yes, that would have been that would have been first and like thirty-six. Yeah. Shotgun gives to Mason. Play action. Mason gets to the outside on that far sideline. Still out, knocked out at the Ooh. twenty-five. And the Valley fans want extra, a penalty. Yeah, a little extracurricular oh, penalty. And they could just be yelling just to stay warm. It is enough for a first down. And, you know, you talk about the fake. I don't know if Lombardi fooled anybody by throwing <laughs> that ball after he handed it off to Mason. But a chance to keep your arm warm. That's true. Ball up to the 24, gain of 11. Gain of 10, sorry. First and 10 for the Tigers. Mason goes in, then tries to go out, and the big defensive ends, defensive tackles, 78 and 75. That's uh, Rodenberg and Logan Jones. Jones, another one of those. This kid's going to be playing on Saturdays if they're not careful. He has an offer from Iowa State and Minnesota. Coach called him a freak in his ability to get off the ball. He'll actually visit Notre Dame next week. And uh, what age did you say he was He's again? only a sophomore. Yeah. Loss of one on the play. Back to the 23 of Valley. Play action. Lombardi throws. Caught by Matney. Matney tries to shake and bake and gets to the three of the 30 on the far side of the field. He'll make it third and manageable on that pass play just short of the 30 at the 29 gain of six but brings up third and manageable seven minutes to play third quarter valley sends two receivers out to the right one to the near side mason next to lombardi rocky looks throws to mason who is ever so close to the first down if you believe the spot on the near side, he's <laughs> short. Or yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Very close to the 34. That's where they needed to go. 
They just have to figure out where that spot is. And I think just by looking, we're going to be what's the – it's not even the width of the paint marker. It's the length of the paint marker that, that marks that, – that indicates the 34-yard line. They're going to bring the chains from the far side to the near side hash. It's either going to be first and 10 or fourth and – a third, Two inches. Yeah, or a third of an inch. <laughs> Short. I don't even think that's a third of it. Oh, they're gonna he oh. puts up two he puts up three inches. Jeepers cat. So it'll be fourth and close. And uh Valley is waiting for everybody to get set. We're trying to run a three inch play here. Lombardi, not known for his running abilities, will likely get the call. Or do you, how risky, how, how, uh, how wild do you want to be on fourth and an inch? Well, I don't think they're going to throw a bomb. Lombardi has it and then some. He gets across the 35 to the 36. Needed three inches, got six feet. That actually helps Lombardi's running average. A lot of times he's uh, sacked, and it just always looks like he doesn't have any positive yards. No. Gain Go of two. Definitely the most positive yards of the night from the quarterback position. Six and a half to play, third quarter. Tigers on the move, the drive that started back at their own 13. Lombardi under center. Gives it Mason. Right tackle puts his head down and doesn't get any further than the line of scrimmage. A Again, in on the stop is Colton Shue. A very nice block by Carson Shelton to uh, hold up a blitzing defensive end. And uh, that kind of sprung it for, you know, the one yard gain. Lombardi in the shotgun, looks across the middle, throws near side, off the fingertips of his intended receiver, Ryan New, the sophomore. And it's third and nine. Again, Lewis Central defensive backfield is up in your face coverage. They have a lot of pressure on those running backs. It's hard to get off the line of scrimmage. And if you do, they're right in your hip pocket. Two receivers left and right. Here comes the heat. Get it away to Mason. And Mason's going to get to the 40, which is well short of the first down. And we have... Well, The clock has been stopped. Yeah, there might be two penalties here. Oh, there's the penalty flag lane at the 35, where the hash meets the 35. Got holding on Valley. And the one referee is indicating that it's a a hold. Our uh, officiating crew tonight. At one point, is Mike Vint, Dirk yeah. Riles, Eric Kennedy, Myron Lynn, and Jason Fagan. One. One question may have been: Did Lewis Central have 12 guys on the field? They have 12 out there now. Well, how about that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now they are sending off 18. Okay. So now Valley's going to punt. The penalty was declined. So it's a fourth down situation. We're 11 on 11, five and a half to play, third quarter. So the Valley offense is drive. Mason gets into it, tries to get a bounce, takes a Lewis Central bounce, and it's uh, caught on the bounce by Valley. And that was uh, Bracken Cobb at the 35-yard line. So that's where Lewis Central will have it. With the wind still at their back.
That drive went nine plays. And only went about 21 yards. So both teams in their opening second half drive, Keith, and that's going to be, uh, that'll be a legal procedure against Lewis Central as the wide receiver on the near side. Just tried to get a running start. He thought it was maybe arena football. And the man in motion went at the same time that Duggan stepped forward. So they had plenty of people moving before the snap. First and 15, ball at the 30. 70 yards to go to the end zone for the Lewis Central Titans. Bradford gets it, goes in, and then tries to get out. Spins away once and twice, but not any further. Avery Bonacci. Avery Bonacci has done a very nice job coming in and uh, playing some ball. He's been in and out uh, throughout the season, but we've seen an awful lot of him tonight. Loss of three on the play. It'll be on the Lewis Central 32-yard line. Bradford again gets the call, and he plows ahead across the 35. And the last one off the pile is Jacob McCudden, the junior. He's one of the guys Coach Duggan was worried about. He says mm -hmm. those front four for Valley are tough. They rotate guys in. It's just a matter of, you know, we haven't seen a defensive front like that. Because it's really a defensive front of eight guys, nine guys that rotate in and out. Third and nine passing situation for Duggan. Drops back, three-step drop. Here comes the heat, gets rid of it incomplete in on that far sideline and Duggan is down he took a hit right there at the end there was only one guy coming and Duggan missed some games this year with a thumb injury and I think he just is uh, he gets up on his own power before the uh, any of the training staffs can get out there he took a shot. Now, in the interim, when Duggan was out earlier this year, it was Brett Tobias who got the call and managed that game well for Lewis Central. Coach Duggan said that uh, that Urbandale game, it kind of opened his eyes that the speed is a little different. As the punt gets away, it's a nice punt taken at the 27 by Valley. And on that far sideline, Keith, that's Carson Shelton. Return of about three yards. But a unique three. I mean, he <laughs> sat back there waiting for an opportunity to go anywhere. But they, uh, Lewis Central was attacking from the Valley side and had him pinned against the sideline. So he just uh, kind of lowered it, went after it. Got three. Positive is positive, Paul. You're in the uh, spinning business. Four plays and a loss of yardage on that drive. Ball's at the 31 of Valley. 69 yards to the house with 3.43 to go. Valley trails 14-7. Lewis Central getting both their touchdowns in the first half. Caught on the far sideline, kept inbounds as Jalen Long who had a nice circus catch earlier um, in the game that set up uh, and, uh, Valley's only touchdown. Keith, it's blowing so hard right now. Is it me or are the lights flickering on the field? <laughs> it kind of looks like it. When you're in a 412 mile an hour wind, it's amazing anything is stable. Valley has it to the 35 yard line after that gain by Shelton or Jalen Long, sorry. Inside, it's Trey Fugate, and he gets about a yard before Hayden Hatcher. That kid just has a nose for the ball. He really does. Uh, he's either made, it seems like he's made every tackle or been close to every tackle tonight. And I'm sure the stat sheet will indicate as such. 
They're going to give him. Yeah, they're going to give him two on that play up to the 37. Because at first look, it looked like he was going to get a lot of yards. Lombardi claps the hands, gets the snap. The heat, it's gotten away and it's caught up at the 45. That's good enough for a first down. Lombardi took a shot after the snap. There was a whole lot of pressure coming from Lewis Central, but Lombardi hangs in there and gets it to Ryan New, right? Yes, Ryan New, first time he's had a catch tonight and it was perfect timing. He had to go up after it and on contact, he was able to maintain the catch all the way to the ground. Gain of nine, ball at the Valley 46 near side. They go Creighton Mitchell and he is just blown under in a hurry. Logan Jones, I think Rodenberg was there as well. Rodenberg is big dude. Yes. 6'4", 220. Haven't seen Mitchell run the ball yet tonight. Seen him on a couple of returns. Mm -hmm. Loss on the play. Three. Ball back at the Valley 43. They go Mitchell play action. Fakes everybody. Jalen Long had it, or Tariq Brown had it. He was kind of turned around. Kind of an awkward motion. Got him in the hands, but dropped it would have been a gain of 15. Instead, it'll be third and 12. A tough, a tough catch. When you're throwing that ball into the wind, you are used to a ball coming in at, at a specific speed all year, and that ball just kind of hung up there, and uh, Tariq Brown is just hanging in the air trying to maintain a position. Just not quite enough velocity. Valley converted on third down before. Can they do it again? They do! Ryan New catches it! Ryan New is still on his feet. Up to the 35 yard line. Ryan New has come up big both times on fourth on third down. Ryan New, a very good, talented uh, sophomore in his own right. Uh, Lombardi, he put that ball right where it needed to be. Gain of 22. As the Tigers come out in first down with a minute 11 still into that win, they're not as scared. Here comes some play action. Again, Lombardi keeps throws, and it's incomplete. He was going going for Shelton on that, Carson Shelton. Pass from Bill Lombardi for number 29. Just a little off the mark. Shelton wasn't necessarily all that wide open. And he also had uh, Jalen Long down the sideline. And that's one of those where you really try to make your decision quick and didn't pan out. Minute two to replay here, third quarter. Valley second and 10. That play action is working. Back underneath Creighton Mitchell. If Valley could just somehow get positive yards, Keith, on a run, mm -hmm. it changed the whole context of the game. Lewis Central is biting on that run because Valley's just not being successful at running the football. Right, and with that, Valley either has to make sure that their passes are complete and they're gonna get people back off of the, uh, out of the box, so to speak. But yeah, you're right, until Valley can uh, utilize their run, it's gonna be tough sledding all night. Pass intended for Matney is nowhere close. It'll be fourth down. 27 seconds. You're not really crazy about punting into this wind. No. Ball is at the 35. Valley needs to get to the 25. You run a play, you would give, and you don't get it, you give Lewis Central one play, really, before the quarter. But if you punt it, what it looks like the Tigers are going to do, you can let the wind help you, and you might be able to be a little more aggressive mm -hmm. than normal and hope the wind blows it back in your favor. So Mason will stand at his own 48, and there's... I think uh, Val yeah, Val Valley delay a game because at this point you'll take the five yards and move the line of scrimmage back to the 40. Yeah, and uh, 
Lewis Central now changes their <laughs> personnel a little bit. They were up ready for a potential fake. And I'm not saying that's out of the uh, realm of possibilities here either because everybody knows Mason can run, but people kind of question, well, do you think he can throw it 15 yards? That's one of those plays that might not be available to you tonight. Mason's going to roll. Lewis Central does the right thing on defense. The, ro the rugby bounces to the 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And picking it up and handing it to the official is Connor Shelton. Textbook 47-yard punt to the Lewis Central 1. And if you're Coach Rebarger... You're now starting to think, all right, we've gotten a surge with our defensive line. If we can take Lewis Central back a couple yards, pick up two points, and then get the ball back there as well. So now, Lewis Central, I be, let's see, it looks, like, it looks like Duggan's back in. He is. He's in the shotgun formation, standing three yards deep in his own end zone. He's gonna run it off right tackle and gets stood up, but not until he rolls forward five feet, or five yards, as uh, Bonacci makes the stop, and that will end the first quarter of the second half, or you like to call it the third quarter, I don't care. The fourth <laughs> quarter, right. when we come back, Lewis Central leads Valley 14-7. That Schottenkirk Chevrolet in Waukee means 0% for 72 months on all 17 Silverados and Colorados. For a limited time, 20% off 17 Cruise, Trax, and Malibu. New 18 Equinox. Power Trucks. Shoot 24 per month. 0% for 72 months on a huge selection of 17 Silverado and Colorados. It's Truck Month in Waukee. Schottenkirk Chevrolet on the west end of Hickman, Waukee is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live, of perseverance and progress. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream, we make history. This 12 minute stands between one team playing on and one going home. Right now, Lewis Central has made the two hour bus ride to West Des Moines. Leads on the board 14 7, has the football at their own eight yard line after a seven yard gain by Max Duggan. They go DeAndre Bridgeford off right side, and he gets a half a yard. It'll be third down. Remember the last time that Lewis Central was pinned on their own side of the field, it was an 85-yard touchdown run by Bradford. He was the second score, which is the winning score right now. Uh, Duggan had a two-yard touchdown run back in the uh, second quarter. All the scoring happening in the second quarter. And right now, Lewis Central is going to have to take time out because they broke the huddle with 12 guys. You just heard some spots that helped paid for this uh, audio broadcast only tonight. Have here's one more. Back after this. To everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose just that you give your best so go ahead place them up take the field have fun and play for the experience for the memories for the love of the game shields why do i look for the seal it's about trust whether i'm buying a car hiring a contractor finding a tax preparer or an honest mechanic the better business bureau seal means this business meets high standards when I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at BBB.org backslash Iowa. Why do I? Along with swimming expert, Jimmy Olson, 
I'm Paul Yeager and along Keith Bornis. Our thanks to Jimmy's trying to stay warm tonight. We try to entertain. Duggan on third down is going to run it a right side the whole time. He is going to be stood up. It's going to be close. So close. They're calling it fourth. Already calling it fourth down, and it's got to be by less than a yard. It's on that far sideline. So now you get bring in the big hoss. That was a dug and play right side the whole way. Yes, he was not trying to make any fakes anywhere. Just roll ahead. As we look at uh, other scores, Dowling is rolling at Urbandale right now, 38 to three. Johnston leads Southeast Polk 14-7. And Centennial ahead of Waukee, 31-14. The winner of this game plays the winner of Centennial and Waukee. I don't have the location of that at this moment. It is short, but I wouldn't celebrate yet if I was Valley like a couple of the defenders are because you still got to stop them on fourth and an inch or two because it ain't by much more than that, Keith. No. They have uh, they've been able to fall forward that far. I think Duggan just looks forward two yards <laughs> on every play. That kid's impressive. And I, I told someone at work today, I said, yeah, I'm getting to see probably the best quarterback in the state right now, at least in 4A well, on and this side of the state. There are people that will argue he's the best quarterback in the Midwest. Well, it's, he's done nothing to disappoint tonight. That's right. And, you know, we saw, like we mentioned earlier about the quarterbacks we've seen before, Keith. And here they come. They're going to go for it. Duggan's going to get under center, see what he's got. Goes under there, he's, I think he's got it on the second push. Initially, I still think he got it. Mm -hmm. So a fourth down conversion. At kind of a dangerous location in the, uh, on the field. Inside your uh, own 12 yard line. Valley would have been within 15 yards of, of, of scoring and potentially tying the game. Now in the fourth quarter, this is a playoff score, 14-7. How many playoff games mm. have less than 21 points? I think you always kind of take the under on a night like tonight. It is cold, but, man, it is a good football game. Duggan, left side, gets uh, contained anyway, but not much uh, Cobb and Darius Manuel. Still a gain of two on the play, maybe three. Ten minutes, clock moving. It is the friend of Lewis Central right That's now. That's right. And what they're going to start doing is just a little bit of dugging to the right, a little yep. bit of dugging to the left, lull you to sleep, throw it over the top, waiting for the opportunity to make a big play. If you're Valley, you're trying to get him in those long situations, but he makes it so hard to get there. Snap of the ball in the shotgun. They fake Brad uh, to D'Angelo, and Duggan keeps it. And here's one of those long situations, Keith. Mm -hmm. Third and eight. So now, oh, there is a uh, the Tiger. No, he is slow to get up. I thought maybe he was just waiting for the crowd to clear. Uh, that might be the big guy. That might be McCutton. because I don't see McCudden standing. Other scores tonight, as uh, we mentioned, Centennial leads. The Jaguars uh, knocked off Dowling Catholic a couple of weeks ago, which forced Dowling into the number two spot of mm -hmm. the district, sent them on the road tonight. Centennial then gets to host. By the way, if... Uh, uh, a game would be at Centennial, whether you're listening for Lewis Central or listening for Valley, and the game would happen to be at Centennial. You would sit. The home side is now what used to be the visitor side. The stands have been completed enough to allow the home fans to sit on the west side at Ankeny Stadium. So that would be different if this game is at Centennial next week, mm -hmm. as both Ankeny and Centennial share that stadium. It is uh, Jacob McCudden, 6'2", 283. He's taller than 6'2", isn't he? I think so. He but not according to the paper. <laughs> we believe the print, the word of print. 
9-21. Third down, eight yards to go. Duggan, shotgun formation. Big conversion here for the Titans. Simmons goes in motion near to far. They fake him. Duggan goes up the middle, and he's stopped. He was stopped, but it was a collision. And it was, well, I don't know who 40 is. Uh, no, he's not listed. No, he's not listed. Bracken Cobb was the other one there for. It is Halloween time of year. I think somebody's dressed up in a tiger, uni well, tiger yeah, uniform for who Halloween. Knows? I'd be very convinced if I'd see that kid coming <laughs> to my door asking for candy. I wonder what his joke would be. I'm not sure. I'm looking forward to those on Monday night. Mm -hmm. Nettles gets the punt into the wind. It stands straight up, and uh, Valley's got to get away from it because Lewis Central is like, if it wants to hit you, go ahead. Yeah, We're fine that's with right. that. What? How much trouble would you be in as Coach Swenson if you just reached out there and grabbed your player? Because he was certainly close enough. I bet he was getting an earful. So now Valley will have the football at uh, the Lewis Central 38-yard line. 38 yards for making this thing very interesting. Not mm -hmm. to say that it hasn't been interesting yet. And I know some of you are, wa are listening going, we're having technical difficulties. Not allowed to show you the video tonight, folks. Just the audio. Thought we'd give you that. 14-7. Brown goes in motion. Play action. Lombardi throws down the middle. Intercepted by Lewis Central. Jalen Long, the intended receiver, Who was but having no part of it was Zach Shipman, the senior. It looked like it was thrown directly to him. He read that the whole way, and Lombardi and did a heck of a job faking that. It was an unbelievable fake. It was that nonchalant style yep. fake. The problem, the throw was not finished. Long had five yards on the defender. He was open. It's a touchdown. Interception. Two interceptions for Lombardi tonight. A fumble mm -hmm. by Lombardi tonight and a turnover on downs. Right? Yeah. Four turnovers for the Tigers. Hard to win a playoff game with it four turnovers. It really is. So now all of a sudden it becomes Lewis Central gets a chance to burn some clock. Eight minutes, ten seconds to go. Lewis Central gives it to, uh, the, the sweep to Simmons was more of a just toss here, get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And if there, if Lewis Central's going to win, it's going to be on the feet of Max Duggan right now because everybody else is having a hard time finding positive yards. And the other thing about it is right now it's anybody's game. If Lewis Central finds a way to lull him to sleep, lull him to sleep, and then all of a sudden over the top with a big play, yep. it becomes maybe out of reach. 7.33, clock moving. Duggan's got no friends back there. They're all standing out in formation. Throw out quick side. Simmons caught and then missed tackle up towards the 20 and across short of the first down. Simmons, excellent job after the catch until John Shaner brings him down. Seven minutes approaching. Tiger defense been on the field a lot here in this second half. But they haven't been on the field as long as that offensive defensive line from Lewis Central. But when you know where you're going, you just seem to, you don't get as tired when you're on that offensive line as you do when you're moving it forward. That's true. Third and four, another big play for Lewis Central. Duggan's going to throw, and it's caught and still going. Zach Brown. Oh, they marked him out of bounds. Did the wind blow him out of bounds? There was wow. nobody around him. He, was, he should still be running into the end zone. That was a big-time play by Duggan on that far side. Zach Brown, who we haven't heard from since early on in the third quarter from his first album, comes through with a biggie here as a comeback follow-up single called Catch Me If You Can. Well, you know, that was one of those plays where he was at the 30-yard line of Valley, 
But it's first and 10 clear back at the 28 of Lewis Central. Boy, Valley catches a break right there. 627 though, clock moving. Lewis Central will take it. They got a fresh set of downs. The clock going into the wind. Bradford is stopped on the dive play. And two minutes have rolled off the clock. At what point do you start, if you can make it third and long, do you take a timeout at this point? There's certainly uh, a train of thought to do that. Duggan gets the call from the sideline. His dad in his 34th season at Lewis Central says he's probably, you do the math, my son's a junior, how much longer I'm gonna coach. Second down. Duggan keeps it near side, gets turned in, and then stood up. I gotta give Connor Shelton credit for keeping Duggan inside the numbers. Forward progress mm -hmm. gets him to about the 32. And a nice job by Bracken Cobb to come in and stop the forward motion and start moving him back. Because the officials, it's been a slow whistle tonight. So if they're moving forward, they're gonna let it play out. If he can stop it and move backward, that's when the whistle's blown. 5.15 to play. Valley trails 14-7. Making some noise, both sides. Big play, again, third down Delay for Lewis game. Central. Oh, he just got it off. Here comes some heat. Duggan running for his life. He'll be stopped short of the first down. Getting the... Nick Buttall is uh, number 40. And also, uh, I think there was some other heat on that play that kind of made that. If it's not a designed run play, <laughs> Lewis Central sometimes struggles to find positive yards for Duggan. If it's mm -hmm. a design, we're running right, right away. The defense having a harder time. Valley has a chance here. If Lewis Central goes through with their punt and there's no penalties and Nettles gets it up in the air and it's taken by the Tigers back at the 35 by Ryan New and he'll return it about eight yards to the 44 yard line. So Valley has 56 yards to tie it. Down seven, 409 to play, fourth quarter. And all three timeouts and the wind, which has, I will say, looks like it has subsided a little bit back under 200 miles an hour. Uh, well, how long could it really last? <laughs> I mean, my goodness. <laughs> I was thinking a few people from Ankeny flew by. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get home tonight. It's gonna <laughs> head down. 409, Lombardi. He's got two receivers left and two right. Brown goes in motion. Mason gets it up the middle and Javon gets three and a half. Clock moving under four now. Creighton Mitchell coming in. Going out is Carson Shelton. How many Sheltons are on this team? Like nine? They're everywhere, Sh Shelton and Shaners. Yes, Mitchell, yes, indeed. play action, Mason at the 50 and he stood up at the middle of the V of Valley at the 50 yard line, third down. They set the ball down and it still rolls because the wind gets a hold of it. New comes in, Mitchell goes out. Mason will be on the left side of Lombardi, shotgun formation. Valley's got two chances to get four yards. They throw it, caught, far sideline, first down. Jalen Long. That'll move the chains, three minutes to play. The clock will move once we're set. Simmons out there to make the tackle. If anybody were to come up to me and ask me, what's the difference in the game to this point? Uh, it's gonna be Lewis Central has been able to spin out of some tackles and Valley has not. 
Uh, they're fundamentally sound in every fashion, this Lewis Central team. They really are. I saw them last year beat uh, Ankeny in the playoff game and took care of business then, and uh, they've only gotten better. And there's a chance, Keith, they don't play in 4A next year. There's, uh, they are right on that cusp. We'll get into that in a moment. Clock moving three minutes. First and 10, Lombardi looks right. Pocket goes, he pulls a Houdini, throws across the middle, caught middle of the field. R uh, Matney, first down to the 23 yard line. Luke Matney, the senior, not wanting to end his career yet, 247. And one of the things that you've noticed in these Valley wide receivers as of late on some of these is they're catching the ball with the hands and then bringing it into the body giving yourself a much better chance of making the completion. Trips to the right, 236, in motion, goes new. Mason underneath, left side, now he's getting six, seven, eight yards at a time. 222 clock moving. The Iowa High School Athletic Association will reclassify from 48 to 42 in the 4A, and right now, Lewis Central would be a 3A school again. Lombardi back to pass, runs out of time. His receivers extends the play once, twice, and then he's knocked out of bounds. And it is a uh, loss of, two, loss of on two the play, and Lombardi just didn't want to tuck and run it. Clock stops right at the two-minute mark on the play that goes out of bounds. Third down. And that's one of those plays where you kind of wonder, okay, why didn't he get rid of the ball? But when you're under that kind of pressure and you've already brought the ball up and had it knocked out of your hands. You can still get called for intentional grounding. Yeah. Even if you're outside the tackle box. That's not a rule in the high school. Right. Game. Lombardi on third down. Throws near side. Caught. And Jalen Long is kept inbounds. Clock stops for just a moment. Inside the 10, it'll be first and goal, a minute 54. Now, something to think about, Keith. Mm -hmm. Valley has not exactly been automatic on extra points. If the Tigers were to score, an extra point kick is not a guarantee. No, but at the same time, if Valley does get a score here, Traditionally, over the many years that Coach Swenson has been uh, playing, he kicks. Lombardi back to pass, looks to the left side, throws at the feet. Jalen Long incomplete. It'll be second and goal from the nine. Minute 37. All three timeouts still remain for the Tigers. Which, depending on when you score, if you score, can you get a stop using those three timeouts and maybe get another? Valley sends two to the left, two to the right. Mason next to Lombardi. Tough snap. Lombardi tries to Houdini, throws towards the end zone. Back! Ryan New! Touchdown! Touchdown Tigers! Ryan New, nine yard strike and down on the turf is. Bo Lombardi back at the 19. He sacrificed it all for the play. And I think it's one of those wind. Yes. Because they're not calling for help. Normally, if it's something serious, you, you, you see the player say, come, come, come. It's one of those, what is it? <gasps> yeah. you, you get the wind knocked out of you. And it's one of, you know. You hope that's what it is. Right. And, it, you know, not to make light of it or anything, but when you see a guy not being able to breathe, it's, a, ah, you just got the wind knocked out of it. Right. So Ryan New catches the nine-yard touchdown pass to pull the Tigers within one point. Lombardi's still down at the 18. And movement. Bo gets up. It, 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 I just truly think it yeah. is the wind. Well, considering he gives a fist bump and starts to jog off the field, uh, that 
Kind of looks better. One of those worst feelings when you get hit. And, you know, Lewis Central was coming. So now... It, it kind of looked like one of those plays from... Uh, uh, what was that movie, Jerry Maguire? Let me... Help me. Help me help you. Help, help me you. to help you. <laughs> Tinley, Tinsley Wright is on to attempt the extra point with a minute 31. Biggest extra point of his career. The snap. The kick is up, and it is good. Good. Tied at 14, the final 91 <laughs> seconds when we come back on CISN. I opened the hearing clinic to offer patients and their families a positive health care experience. If you have trouble hearing clearly at church, at the movies, watching TV, or with your friends and family in a group conversation, what are you waiting for? In less than half an hour, we can give you peace of mind and answer any questions that you may have. Call us today to schedule your appointment. The Hearing Clinic, 515-440-3323. We listen, you hear. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. One minute, 31 seconds stand between a winner and a loser. Or two teams that are going to go to overtime. Either way, it's up to you. That's Whatever right. you want to say. Uh, Tinsley Wright converts on the extra point attempt to tie it at 14. Valley had a short field. Were able to convert on a nine-yard touchdown run or a pass to Ryan New. And Wright is going to send Simmons four yards deep in the end zone. So now, Keith. Mm -hmm. Valley has three timeouts. Lewis Central has two. Who's going to use their timeouts before we're done here? Well, that's going to be an interesting deal because from the offensive side of the ball, you want to end up moving it. You need clock to do it. Uh, overtime is not a guarantee for anybody. And so I almost feel like Lewis Central will use one first. If, uh, if they Valley get, might be using if it they get six yards, yeah. four yards or more, they might use it. Minute thirty-one, Duggan in the uh, shotgun gives it, to faces himself. it to Bradford, and then oh, and a penalty <sighs> comes in as uh, it came from the near sideline. That's got to be a hold. I don't know. We'll find out in a moment here. It's on the offense. Yeah. Illegal block. Was it an illegal block or was yeah. it a hold? Well, he went. He, he did. didn't do this. Okay. He put the hand out. Block. So. So now, now it's going to be Valley who uses the time. I think you're right. Six seconds went off the clock. Duggan ran it left and was just flat out stood up by Connor Shelton on that play. And also. Uh, Bracken Cobb, I think, was there as well. And this now all of a sudden changes Lewis Central's game plan a little bit. They're back at the 10 yard line. Wind going into the wind, eye formation. Bradford's behind him. If you play conservative, Valley's just going to call timeout. Bradford gets it. He stood up with nowhere to go. And there's the first timeout. Valley's going to take timeout. Shelton or Shaner, you pick. John Shaner gets the, gets the tackle. Minute 17, it'll be second down and 20. So you bring up Shelton's, you bring up Shaner's. Uh, earlier this year, um, we at the freshman level, we have twin brothers that are the McCabe boys and throughout this whole thing it all we literally had an official come back to the sideline one time in the freshman game and said how many relatives do you have in <laughs> valley right now 
which you wouldn't normally think is the issue at Valley. <laughs> you could absolutely see it at Van Meter. At right. You don't think Valley would have all these siblings and relatives. And, you know, that's something my Coach Swenson and I talked about a couple weeks ago about relatives. I think he, we were talking about the Southeast Polk. It was the son of a kid that had played for him. And he goes, it just doesn't happen as much here at Valley right. as it did when I was at West Marshall or at Spencer. But do you want, speaking of relatives, next year in volleyball, there's going to be two cubics. Well, I think, I think uh, they'll like that. Second and 23. Duggan, right side. He's going to be well short of the first down. He's not even going to. He'll get three. And uh, they'll stop the clock again with a minute 14. Now they're timeout. So, okay. Lewis Central gets... 10 more yards, balls at the 20. They'd be facing a, you know, a fourth and 10. You let them punt it, but if you're Lewis Central, you have to kick the football, right? Yes. And if you're Valley, do you go after the kick? No. You let set up for whatever return. Yes. Do you even try to return it and just know that the, the bounce is not going to be that big? Be that big because you're just not going to have the energy behind the kick to move it forward. So if you're if you're Lewis Central right now, mm -hmm. what are you trying to get? If I'm Lewis Central, I am, I, I'm going for a first down right here because anything shy of it, I got to punt it away. So I'm going to the sticks. 20 yard out. You got to hope your protection lines up. Or if you think you have a draw play that can work. And that's something they've run. Max Duggan, shotgun formation. Snap of the ball, runs near side. Gets turned in, and he's going to get nowhere close. That is not the play I was going to call. Valley was selling out that Duggan was going to get the ball. And uh, Darius Manuel was there, and Lewis Central only gets up to the 13. So Valley takes their third and final at this mark with a minute eight to play. Paul Yeager, Keith Bornis, Jimmy Olsen here at Valley Stadium for this audio only broadcast. You can kind of follow along on the board. This is a good one. It I, is. I, this, I thought it'd be this good. Now, let's remember, Valley does have experience in overtime. Mm -hmm. Beat Southeast Polk 41-34 a couple of weeks back. You know, <laughs> The average margin of victory for both of these teams last week was 70 points. The average. <laughs> That's North, kind uh, of a lot. Uh, Lewis Central beat North 71-0, and Valley beat Marshalltown 69-0. Right now it doesn't matter. It's 14-14 with a minute eight. Drew Nettles is three yards deep. The return men for Valley are inside the 40. Nettles gets into it. High kick, but taken and fair catch made by Valley at the 34-yard line. A minute three, 34 yards, no timeouts, wind at your back. If you're Lewis Central, you're just hoping to get to overtime right now. Absolutely. Wind at your back, and the flag, it's only probably now gusting at, well, 12. But it's actually gone down quite, quite a, bit. a bit. Yeah. But Valley has two kickers that can probably legitimately have a chance of making a field goal inside of 45 yards, but you certainly don't want to have to kick it from there. You'd like to get quite a bit closer or score a touchdown. Trips to the left for Valley. Lombardi looks to the left side, throws back to Mason around the right. Javon makes a move at the 30. Inside the 25, he is out of bounds, short of the first down, but what it does is it stops the clock, the route down that right side. So now you're at second and three. You can run a play up the middle mm -hmm. because the clock would stop with the first down for a little bit. At least enough time to get set again. 56 seconds, same formation, three to the left. Mason to the right, in motion, the touchdown new. Mason up the middle, up to the 20, inside first down, still on his feet. Move the chains to the 18-yard line. And now Valley is certainly feels like they have 
everything going for him right now. First and 10 inside the 20 at the 18. Clock starts now at 50 seconds. Lombardi sends new in motion, exact same play. Javon Mason, not the same result, gets quite a few yards. Maybe five to the 13, 30 seconds to play. No timeouts for Valley. And why they're not calling timeout for Lewis Central, you know, give yourself some time. And Lombardi's gonna snap to clock the ball at 16 seconds. So now it'll be third down. This is a pass all the way, I would think. Well, yeah, it. Or are you setting up for a. Well, if you're going to run this thing and you don't get in, it better be a first down or your kick team better be ready to roll. Uh, th uh, there's no way you can get that a playoff in 16 seconds to get the kick team ready. It's third down, six yards to go. Valley needs to get to the eight. Lombardi out and up is not there, and he's going to be sacked. And Valley is not going to get a chance. They got to run out there. There is no way. Five seconds, four seconds, three, two, one. Too many on the field. And Lewis Central is going to get a chance to play in overtime. It'll Lombardi was sacked in the middle of the field. No chance. The worst scenario. Mm -hmm. They were running an out and up. They weren't. Valley was going for broke. They were. And they, they shot snake eyes. It did. And some people are going to now question, okay, why clock the ball? If when you, you were set. Gonna... And you ran 15 seconds off. Yeah. So it's overtime. It's overtime. Everybody's going to get a chance. Why not? Yeah. Why not? So in 2.45, overtime begins. We'll take a break. Overtime, Jimmy. Why not go out with something fun? We're back after this. Down clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place. G&L Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. G&L Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. October and we all know what that means. Time for our annual mammograms. Iowa Radiology believes that mammograms are the best way to catch breast cancers early and save lives. With 3D and low-dose technology, they are now more accurate and safe. It's only once a year, and if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your daughters, your friend, your sons, or your family. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology. Our Many times at the Lodge of Ashworth, new members come to us from their big, beautiful homes. They find our spacious two and three bedroom suites to be an ideal fit. We have a limited number of these larger and penthouse style suites, perfect for the retiring executive's style living. We have suites ready for immediate move in or we can help you customize. The Lodge of Ashworth is all inclusive. No surprise, additional fees or upcharges. Call us today for a private tour and ask us about our flexible pricing plans. They think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the T. There's a Godfather's Specialty Pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all-meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. The other. We've played four quarters. Why not, you know, a little bit more? Paul Yaker, Keith Bornis, Jimmy Olsen. Valley Stadium in this playoff action. 33 degrees. Feels like it's 23 outside. The wind from the northwest at 17 miles an hour has now picked Dally back up. To go on <laughs> Did he just say Dowling? 
Or did he say valley? I think he said valley. Yeah, it sounded like he said valley. <laughs> Didn't it? Okay, Kevin, I'm not completely crazy. Ugh. I mean, my ears don't hear well. So you want to – we. You know, Keith, we, how many years have we been doing games together now, <laughs> and we didn't have any overtime games, and now we've had two in four weeks. That's right. I, my apology to our to your wife that you're not going to be home tonight. Yeah. For a while. She's kind of gotten used to it this year, as Valley has had some very long I, games. I call them West Coast games. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Whenever we start out here, it's 7.30, 7.45, 8 o'clock. We're the last game. We're like watching the Mariners and the uh, the A's play that last game on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, other scores, we're, we're the only ones left, I believe, right? Yep. Dowling has gone final. They have beaten Urbandale 45-3. to Johnston leads Southeast Polk. That's in the fourth quarter, 14-7. And Centennial is ahead of Waukee, 31-21. That one's gotten interesting, but still, I believe that one is still. Is that final? Final. final. Oh, oh, Dowling is in the – well, that ball game's over anyway. 45-3, <coughs> might as well be final. All right, Lewis Central has the ball first, ball at the 10. Both teams get an opportunity to score. Play action right away. They throw on the, uh, the comeback screen, still going, and Lewis Central is going to be at the wow. 5, and there's a man down, excuse me, for Lewis Central back at the 12. Actually, there's two, two down. Lewis Central players down. That slip screen got more yardage than I thought it was going to. He was done uh, for a uh, two-yard loss and somehow got to the five, almost to the four. Dane Theobald was one. He was holding a wrist or hand, and he goes to the sideline. The other player got up, and so we get a full injury timeout. No, Both they're, teams have, no, they're bringing them all back on. I was going to say, I don't know why everybody is running away. Come on, coach. Bring <laughs> them in. Let's go, let's go. Let's play this thing. And they start the play clock. Good for the officials. Oh, yeah. No time, so I don't have to worry about that right now. Ten seconds on the play clock, and there's still not a guy in. Five seconds, got to get that right side. Be careful here, that's how this goes. Bradford stood up at the five, he goes nowhere. Bridgeford, DeAnthony Bridgeford. This team's gonna be good next year. Yes, a lot of, they are. He's only a sophomore. Third and five, third and goal from the five. Coming in for Valley is Victor Ariola. Coming off is uh, Amafadon. Third and goal from the five. Bridgeford is next to Duggan. They're going Duggan on the right side, and then he escapes one tackle, and he's going to be denied the end zone by a yard. Wow. Oh, that makes the decision that much tougher now. Do you take the points? Or do you try to get the six? Well, you're on the road. You've already played with fire a little bit. I, I don't see how you – time out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how you – you know what? I can't decide either. We'll, we'll take a quick 30-second timeout, Jimmy. We're back in a moment. Want to get stronger, faster, healthier, you want more. You want to be part of something bigger than yourself. A place for people of all ages, all walks of life, that provides opportunities for all to succeed. We do that. We're the why. Build more than muscle. Build a stronger community. The pep band has stayed. I don't know what happened to this. Oh, the students have moved down here. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah, it's going to tip the stands because all the weight's gone from Section D down to Section G. Fourth and 
goal. And they're putting it on the line here, Paul. They're going for broke. Although Valley still has to convert. It's not over yet. Bradford taps the right side of the center. Look for the quarterback sneak. They go. And he is. No signal yet. There Touchdown, Lewis Central. Max Duggan sneaks in on the left side. And the officials are kind of talking to each other. It was that close. They're just trying to double check and make sure. And the call is going to stand. Can, you can't reverse that once it's signaled, can well, you? Well, I don't know. We, this would, there's no video tonight. We can't would, replay it. Yeah, this would be where the challenge flag would come I'm in. Trying. But you got to have compelling evidence. And before the kick, there's a whistle. A legal procedure will be charged against motion against Lewis Central. So that goes back five. Wind's not an issue anymore. Well, it is back up again. Yeah, but it's at everybody's back. Yeah, now it doesn't matter. Neither team wants to go home. That's right. Yeah, this is good. Uh, just knew it have, you just kind of got that sense. Both these teams within two points of each other on average, well below their season average tonight. The extra point is good. Good. So Lewis Central takes a 21-14 lead. And now Valley gets their opportunity at the 10. And it's on Valley. The pressure falls to this side of the field. You know, if, if Lewis Central doesn't get, if you don't get within a yard do you run the sneak? If it would have been, I mean, Duggan barely got it in from a yard mm -hmm. out. Say that thing was at the two or the three. Do you kick it and just take the points? You got a, you got a great, yeah. I think you got to go for it, don't you? That doesn't matter now. They scored yeah, a touchdown. Right. But it's something you got to think about if we get to a second overtime. Mm -hmm. No guarantees. The Valley offense... Because they haven't missed any extra points. Their kicker is a good kicker. Yeah, Nettles. Drake Nettles with the extra point. So Valley will go with the two with two receivers to the right. One to the left. It's Jalen Long. In motion is Tariq Brown. Fake the jet sweep. Go Javon Mason right up the middle. And Mason's going to get on first down to the two. Eight-yard pickup for Javon Mason. They've kind of gone to that play quite a bit tonight. And I'd say overall it's been rather successful. Better than off tackle right. But you know how it is. You try to run something. You know it's been bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe you run it right here. But here comes the big house, the big ones. Mm -hmm. There's a fullback. Mason, he stopped well short of the line of scrimmage by Colton Chu. We've said his name a bunch tonight. That ends up being a loss of almost two yards. So now it'll be third and four. Three and a half, I guess. Short four. Valley sends two to the left. Mason behind Lombardi in motion. Brown fake the jet sweep play action. Lombardi is going to be taken down. Huge sack by Lewis Central. Damon Deo, the senior, 5'10", 240 pounds, makes it fourth and goal at the 14. Timeout, Valley. And their season comes down to one play. I think there was a missed assignment of some kind on that play, Keith, or execution of some kind because mm -hmm. Lombardi play-actioned and somebody missed 
Deo up the middle. And there was another, there were three Lewis Central players, and they could have been coming on the stunt. Right. They, the heat was coming, and on that play, Mason's trying to work his way to the outside to set up that little off, off tackle screen, and he was covered. Yeah. There was no room to go. Lombardi is looking to uh, do something with it, and he does a quick little pump fake as, hey, that's not open. He's got no choice but to eat it now. One play. One play comes down to this, fourth and goal. Back at the 13-yard line. Lombardi has Mason next to him in the backfield. Oh, here we go. Lombardi looks to the left, throws towards the end zone. Incomplete. Lewis Central wins. Lewis Central wins 21-14. The pass falls short of the end zone. Incomplete. And the Titans come to West Des Moines and go home with a victory. You got to give a lot of credit to a good ball team out there all year long. People are trying to decide if anybody is going to come out of that, the true west side, and Lewis Central, they got it done. You don't win many playoff games with four turnovers either. True. You know, that's true I mean, enough. And, and Lewis Central didn't score in the second half until overtime. And Valley will end the season eight and two. Lewis Central will advance at nine and one. And it's going to set up a very interesting quarterfinal yeah against Centennial at Centennial I, I think it's I would imagine I would imagine because they're still a district champ and both of these teams are gonna have a presentation and there'll be trophies going there'll be a trophy going back to Valley High School for a uh, playoff appearance That was a good football game, Keith, all the way around. Um, it was know. very intense. And that is, you know, a cold night, uh, but it's football weather. It's November. You know, you got a team with uh, an incredible quarterback mm -hmm. in Max Duggan, and he was as good as built. A lot of long faces and some tears on the Valley sideline, and only one team gets to win, finish with a win at the end of the year. That's right. Lewis Central uh, scored on a seven-play drive back in the second quarter to go up 7 nothing. That was pretty early in that second quarter. And then they got another score uh, on an 85-yard touchdown run by DeAnthony Bridgeford. And he just took the dive and kept on running and really never got touched. And then Valley comes back before half. Valley Tigers presented their trophy, and Lewis Central advances, Keith, and, you know, Valley scored before uh, half, uh, halfway through that uh, second quarter on a uh, Javon Mason touchdown, and then right before the end of the game, uh, in regulation, Ryan New caught a nine-yard touchdown pass. Lewis Central, all they really had to do was get a first down and extend that game, but mm -hmm. the first down play doesn't go uh, the way of... Shut, turn this. Hold on just a minute. Do what you all wanted me to do a long time ago and shut that window. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have mattered. It was just a little crack. It, it, Valley uh, holds Lewis Central 
Gets the punt, 34 yards to go to the score. Mm -hmm. Get down inside the 15, clock the ball on second down to make it third down. And uh, a, a play doesn't go, uh, go your way on the, uh, it's a sack. Mm -hmm. And you can't get your, uh, with 16 seconds left, you just can't run a play like that and get your kicking team on there. Missed opportunity at that point mm -hmm. to, because uh, that would have won the game if yep. the kick, and it's no guarantee the kick goes through either. Right. A lot of things going on there. And then Lewis Central, I think I said it, Lewis Central is just going to consider a win getting to overtime. And, yes, you could see the reaction. You know, we were asking, why aren't they calling timeout? Why aren't they calling timeout? Well, it's because they banked on uh, if they're going to clock the ball, run a play, we get a sack here, it's over. Yeah. Because what, what good is stopping the clock for Valley at that point? Right. Why would you want to stop it for them? Mm -hmm. Your defense is on the field. We're going to win or die with them. Yep. You know, you're this close. Uh, and Lewis Central, I told Coach Duggan, I said, you do realize nobody wants to play you, and this is why. I don't think Valley overlooked this team at all. I think some teams would have overlooked mm -hmm. Lewis Central tonight. Coach Swenson, too much respect for this team. They have some incredible athletes, and if they're mm -hmm. not in 4A next year, look out Class 3A. Oh, boy. Look out Class 4A that's next right. year. They're going to be – that's one of the best teams in the state right there. And mm -hmm. if that ends up being, you know, a Centennial Lewis Central and say they get past Centennial and would maybe play a Dowling, it's a heck of a semifinal game. That's right. That is for sure. They did a lot of things without Duggan this year. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do with him. Yeah, see how it goes. Well, Keith, uh, I think that is going to do it for us here in 2017. Uh, the only way is if we end up with uh, Johnston or there's still a possibility we would have some type of audio here on CISN.TV. Keep an eye on our Twitter feed. We'll have an update. We'll see what the boss tells us. But uh, for us this season here at Valley Stadium, Keith, always good to work with you, and I'm sure we'll see you in basketball and uh down the road. Good luck in uh, junior high wrestling. Thank you. Yeah, we have our first meet coming up on Thursday. And then uh, it'll be track season before you know it. It's right around the corner. That's what you can hope for because then that means it's spring. <laughs> 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 All right. For Jimmy Olsen, for Keith Bornis, I'm Paul Yeager. Lewis Central tonight advancing with a 21-14 overtime victory here at Valley Stadium. So long for 2017. When people visit the Lodge of Ashworth, they fall in love with our grounds. They're impressed with our dining room, but it is our spacious two and three bedroom suites that attract the most attention. With bay windows, full kitchens, large walk-in closets, and modern appliances, the Lodge feels like home. We have suites move in ready, or we will help you customize. Create a home office, media room, or bedroom for visiting friends or family. Call us today for a private tour and ask about our flexible pricing plans. October and we all know what that means. Time for our annual mammograms. Iowa Radiology believes that mammograms are the best way to catch breast cancers early and save lives. With 3D and low-dose technology, they are now more accurate and safe. It's only once a year and if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your daughters, your friend, your sons, or your family. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. Happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Building a strong community.